All right, so uh, welcome to week seven of the Opus Magnum 2023 tournament. Um, puzzle this week was Yay. Warp Fuel, which was uh, probably the most challenging puzzle, uh, I, I, I think. <laughs> People certainly... It's not exactly hard to solve, but it's definitely right. hard to optimize. <laughs> yeah, so I think a lot of puzzles uh, this year had one or the other metric hard to hit min on, and this one was uh, challenging to hit min on either of them. Um, so for cost, uh -huh. the usually for low cost, you want to use just one arm um, with as few track as possible. And in this case, the puzzle, technically, you can put enough stuff around the arm to make the puzzle solvable. So the stuff that you need is um, <clears throat> the inputs and the output, the bonder and debonder, because you have to debond these uh, quicksilver and then bond the okay. output together. And then this projection glyph, you have to be able to access this because uh, the Quicksilver is just a single atom. And yeah, and Tidex. then the rest of the glyphs can Tidex be done. Can be no access. Exactly, completely indirectly because you can bond some structure. Calcifier can be no access. Duplication can be no access. Right, duplication can be no access. Oops, uh, all no access. Where's Burla? Yeah, so. And everything that has half access needs to be half access. <laughs> right. And there's also waste, so the recipe for making this, you pull four of each input, and the fourth uh, exotic metalloid input you pull, you debond all the quicksilver, but then the lead becomes waste. So uh, you have to deal it's with that It's a well-calculated puzzle, perhaps too well. <laughs> and also you can't swing all the way across because this burlo is here. Um, so it's you can't swing an arbitrarily long stick all the way around so and also there's a one atom input which is impossible to suppress with one arm so that's, that's the hardest part <laughs> yeah that one single atom input so it's that's the exact same input shapes as sailcloth thread hmm yeah i definitely got some comments uh comparing it to sailcloth thread uh i guess saying that it was it had even more constraints on it so yeah, it's like it's like somebody made high gloss finish with three additional years of knowledge, and it's just that much more terrifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> just yeah, exactly. Because seeing all the like dubious cost puzzles get knocked off one by one, it's like, what is is there? Is it possible to make like a truly dubious cost puzzle? I don't know. Let's try this. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least uh, at least it doesn't have the awful rate that uh, actually, what was the rate for its high gloss finish? I'm not sure. What was the what? What was the rate for high gloss finish? I mean, it was slow because you needed projection to get four metals to become yeah, there was also one of gold. There was also purification available, which this one thankfully doesn't have. Mm -hmm. Well, although it would make costs easier if you were forced to use purif uh, purification. But I guess in that well, puzzle I mean, you weren't cycles. forced to use it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, for cycles... Um, both, so the, uh, I guess I can spoil min latency is four, uh, theoretically. Um, because on this input, the uh, limiting recipe is you triple X bond, you calcify, duplicate, and then do this multi bond. <clears throat> and that's four things. And then on this side, you have to debond all of these. The, the last input you pull, you debond all of these, and then uh, use the three quicksilvers for projection. So to debond the last quicksilver and then use it for projection, that's uh, latency is four. But yeah. that's also then, very challenging. If you, if you actually count up the number of inputs, you need um, 24 of each of them. Grab the last on 47. L equals four means you have the 53 cycle theory min. Mm -hmm. So yeah, theory min here is uh, 140, as you can see here, for cost. And then for cycles, it's 53. So let's see how people approached it. So there was definitely um, a lot of, you know, how far do I want to, like, how, how much do I want to shoot for the moon here, which we'll see different approaches, uh, how, how close they can get to those numbers. But yeah, we're going to start with cycles. So first up, so. yeah, we have a solve from uh, 5381. Nice. 
And the, na or the notes are, after a lot of hell and pain and collisions and problems, I have finally solved it for the first time. This is just an initial solve, though, so expect my cost solution to be a lot better than this. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> uh, I'm seeing this do something that I imagine we will eventually see more of, where you calcify two of the fires, duplicate one of them into water, and then the other one back into fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because of the geometry of it makes that easy, I guess. Because, yeah, it's like you can put the um, edge fire on the duplicator instead of having to put the burlo in a place that can reach the middle. But yeah, oh yeah, I should also oh, mention, yeah, oh, yeah, I saw um, the stream has lexicographic cycles in there, so you can see this has a rate of 88. Um, oh, nice. <coughs> And yeah, the, 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 the input suppression there. Yeah, it's throwing one out, one input completely into the trash to be able to use it, but it's allowing it to get access to the Burlo again to refire. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really an interesting constraint, and I'm going to use interesting in the ambiguous way to not be able to reform any of these triplex bonds after you've changed the composition from pure fire. It's, it makes it a lot more challenging. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess that's another thing that I didn't mention that makes cost hard too, is because there's a lot of bonds that you have to either be careful not to break. Yeah, you have or, to preserve them. Yeah, so if, if you can't accidentally break this one of these bonds because you can't make it again. <clears throat> there's also the fact that that is probably the worst input shape with the most infamous cycles records. Oh, the uh, Y shape? Alcohol separation, preservative salt. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, it really means you got to swing it, but it really means you don't want to. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it did end up getting... Approach to the, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I have a good approach to the fact that this input, or the, yeah, the Y shape is symmetric, but not slidable. It's a nice, you can adapt to that in a nice way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this input has been in two puzzles in a row, so... Uh, apologies for that, but yeah, there's there's lower fact, reasons. Yeah, we, okay, we saw a lot of it last week, and a lot of people who were rotating it from two places to land on the exact same debonder in the same way, and that's all that. I meant. Mm -hmm. All right, next up I we have stole tech from past solutions to make it easy to solve. <laughs> next up we have Seven T Storm. Uh, <clears throat> one fixed the title. Two had to modify something a bit. Oh, does projection last? Yeah. So the previous solution did a lot of um, sort of manipulation of these to get them in the right spot to bond to this thing, whereas this one just moves this thing around and bonds them all sort of as they're coming in and then projects. And yeah, you can kind of see the recipe here where you have all these quicksilvers um, that you use to promote these with four inputs. Mm -hmm. I just turn everything to pr promote it to iron and then use the extra input to do the last three. Right, which is, yeah. right, which is similar to uh, the previous puzzle uh, uh, by Crystal Transceiver. Yeah, that iron uh, intermediary is very common. Mm -hmm. Next up we have not That way if you uh, make a good pipeline for getting the input to become just the iron intermediary then the rest is simplified enough to be kind of reasonable <clears throat> Right, because one yeah. input becomes an iron intermediary sort of on its own Oh, this and one uses up that extra all, input yeah. over the course of the first two That's kind of nice It's kind of cool that probably the... smart <laughs> The, the participation trophy's worth more this week than in other weeks. Like, getting 30... I'm getting already doing better than week two. <laughs> yeah. Getting top 30 in, like, week one is a bit of an achievement, but getting top 30 here is like, yay, I submitted. I got mm -hmm. top 30. <laughs> yeah, that is that is an interesting effect of this scoring system. It's probably good, actually, because it encourages you to submit to a hard week. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's the same idea as the plus 10 for doing the final week at all. Of like, I want people to still participate when it's really, really hard. 
mm. but now it's kind of baked in. Yeah, I've been pretty happy with his scoring system so far. Uh, it does mean that the idea of catching up to people far ahead of me is pretty gone, because if they're going to score top three, I won't be able to get any points gain on them. Right. That's fine. Unless they, like, miss. Yeah, I mean, if I could go and like, cut four people's internet, I still wouldn't, because I'm an honest competitor. <laughs> Like, Phantom Fix been, has dropped out of top 10 before. By missing the sparse area. I was missing that way, not like miss submitting to the puzzle, but like just no, missing. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant like missing tech. Yeah. Yeah, like Week 4 area was one of the rare Phantom Pig uh, misses, but still, he's still very comfortably in first. Mm -hmm. right. Unless you're Kelly Racist, then you might be within. Optimized for uh, victory screen. We're getting a lot of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's interesting to still be differentiating these. Let's just give it a go solves by their cycle count because you can see there's efficiency gains in each of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a uh, rate mostly. Yeah. This left to right um, debond debond purify or project project is really slick, and uh, I used it the same way. Nice. I'm excited to see the top cycle solves. Just the top solves in general today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and yeah, this one has the same thing where it pulls this one uh, and sort of uses it gradually as they're going past. Okay. Also, did you know Burlo can be on a track? Anyone who didn't know, this is a good solution to look at. <laughs> yeah, especially for geometry like this, uh, it can be very helpful to be able to get out of the way. Uh, it's very useful in area. Well, I say useful, it's mostly the cause of some pain in area solves, but... Because mm -hmm. you can use it to uh, suppress inputs, too. Oh yeah, and production. Since you have very limited space there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the note is, no, just give me the consolation prize, thank you. Alchemist Kazia and you still want a break. <laughs> nice. Yeah, fair, fair. Uh, next up, Guilty Bystander. Not really a Cycles main, more of a Casual main. Casual main is good. Yeah, we've dropped rate from 30 to 25 on this, so it's... Mm -hmm. and I think this is... Main... Definitely using the arms on the left in a bunch of different ways pretty well. Yeah, it's kind of like some solvish in a way. And yeah, it's kind of min glyphs, if, depending on what you count this multibonder as. Oh, oh, also, the yeah, Fratelli nice. is excellent. Mm -hmm. Nice. The pivot point. Yeah, the core of the warp fuel. The moist core. <laughs> <laughs> wet. <laughs> the wet fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone chuckling uncomfortably after the word is said. <laughs> mm, moist. Anyways, next up we have 42 Genius 42. So, so cycles. <clears throat> Just for points, really, and to have much better cycles than the Gold Gilder Solve. This looks organized. Yeah. Hex arm. It does buffer out its three centers onto the hex arm while it is building the core, which allows them to be added without any extra tech needed. Probably speeds up the loop as a whole. It's definitely faster than the last one's loop, but it's hard to say whether it's just that or other things. Mm -hmm. uh, it is two cycles faster of a loop, because I can see the uh, Lexi. Oh, and yeah, Yosh points out in... Uh, Chat. Burlo is having a party. It's oh yeah. Been all on it <laughs> Indeed. Damn, I should have done that. I forgot. <laughs> With a 23 cycle loop, it's kind of hard to get a perfect Burlo spinny without sacrificing five cycles. Mm -hmm. And yeah. with optimal rate, it's still eight cycles. <clears throat> yeah, it has yeah. to like spin back uh, for two cycles and then wait one. Uh, next up is Cadspin, last minute solution, or er, submission. This is a... I'm getting out of the two digits so soon. Yeah. 
And yeah, this is a 17 cycle loop. Nice. I particularly like this tri-arm, uh, doing the pivot, mm -hmm. the calcification, the bonding, and the duplication. I really like that it bonds one of the metals in first and then does the burlo. That's just a slight latency improvement because you can. You can put even two metals on that without crashing into the burlo. You just obviously can't put three metals on without crashing unless you're going to do the secondary duplication that 5381 did. Right. Which is uh, the fact that it can bond two before uh, duplicating water onto it is pretty useful for cost. Yeah, definitely. Next up we have Tapu Mouse. Dapio. I hate when I have to pad the solution to avoid collisions. Oof. This one's making two outputs at once. Or no. It's making no, it's only one at once, but it's a in the middle loop because it says it's the Lexi of 23 and then brackets has two numbers. Mm -hmm. Oh, 1215, huh. That's interesting. Yeah, arms, what's, where's arm six, this one? It's doing different things every time. Also, we're now cleanly under 100 cycles, so a good nice. cycle digit count. Mm -hmm. If you were in the like space chem tournaments talking about the good first digit, well, getting a good digit count is the first step. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we're about to start entering um, real cycles territory here with this solve, though. Uh, maybe. Yeah, we're getting we close. to my solve, which is uh, pretty shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, I guess you can look at the uh, throughput or um, rate, I guess. So Yeah, we're not at min rate yet. Right. right. So this is almost there. 12 would be min, but it has that 15, I guess, to avoid a collision. Um, it's 8, that's min, not 12. Yeah, oh, yeah, 8. Sorry, sorry. Because, yeah, two, two, no, 2 times 4, yeah. And, and min would be something like 13 and then brackets 8. But 13 oh, latency is monstrous. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This is me. <laughs> 38 brackets 8, that's kind of funny. <laughs> what do you mean latency? What's that? <laughs> so we have this very familiar... You're just doing the same thing as the, uh, the race solve. Getting some weird deja vu looking at this solve. <laughs> I did this in half an hour. <laughs> It's got to be 21st, that's good enough. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good rate solve. Uh... <laughs> it's an impressive half hour effort, honestly. <laughs> Can imagine if we were speed solving and we're like one hour to cycle optimize it. Well, that's yeah, a problem. Good. Most people would go for rate. I don't know With what a... I would do. I would kind of combust. <laughs> <laughs> With a... Better latency management than I do because uh, it does not loop around on itself and it probably should. <laughs> yeah, it's solve time optimized full throughput. There's probably going to be better like full rate solutions that aren't optimized for cycles. Right, next up we have Hello Jasper with uh, last two hour cycles. Oh wow, this is min rate as well. It's just too latency better. Mm -hmm. Exactly top 20, because he was saying in chat, do, do I make top 20? <laughs> yeah, we're already in Random top 20. Yorichi says, shout out to when Goodbye Galaxy explained the rate metric to me as cycles, but you don't care about cycles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is reminding me a little bit of Universal Solvent back in the early days of the game when people would make full throughput solutions with like plus 15 extra latency and they would be the cycles record because no one had found out how to cut latency yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everyone and sort of- we have Universal Solvent as it is now. <clears throat> it kind of felt- Yeah, now Universal Solvent's one away from min, but like getting under 50 for the first time was like a big breakthrough on Reddit. And it was like at least two weeks after the game came out. 
Yeah, because like at, at least for me in, in those early days, and I think for a lot of other people, like as they join the community, it kind of feels dirty to do the uh, like 6P optimizations for min cycles. Yeah, I mean, batching was a deterrent, and so people, like, you still got down to 41 without batching eventually. So you could get quite a bit under 50 cleanly, but people had no idea how to manipulate things to cut latency. Because mm -hmm. that is a hard skill to figure out. One which we will see people master in this puzzle. Indeed. Yeah, I think batching batching's one of those texts that's, like, a lot easier to be shown than it is to try and discover on your own. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Ooh, two pipelines, one burlo. Nice. Yeah, I got the burlo in the middle there. Also kind of awful latency. <laughs> I mean, so one of the really nice things about two pipelines is that you now have each arm only accepting input half as often. Gets it to be possible to do a lot more things, but if you're not at the same skill level of like, I can always build tight pipelines, then yeah, you'll have more latency that way. Mm -hmm. And especially for these big input shapes, it can be uh, very challenging to do every two. Every four is much more reasonable. And yeah, there's a waste chain on this side because uh, you can only have one disposal. Uh, of course, yeah. Disappointing. I like each pipeline has a pivot arm. It's like 17, 18. There's just like there to pivot and it's mm -hmm. a really nice pivot. To deep on the quicksilver. Oh yeah. Yeah, getting that to pivot without crashing into the next input coming in is really satisfying. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely a very nice looking solve with the symmetry. One, draw one drawback of two pipelines is that it does take basically twice as much area. Secondary on this is area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Has it mattered yet? No, we haven't had any cycle tie yet. We're here already. Yeah, here's Mr. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the railgun, or how I that settled. That's probably what I should have done. <laughs> <laughs> the note is, actual min cycles is awful because you need four of each input per product, introducing five atoms per pull and requiring so much debonding, projecting, and bonding to do. I calculated 54 for naive min, but geometry is a headache. So instead, I went for rate first, hence the railgun for spitting out exotic reactive iron, and then I trimmed up the latency in area. So yeah, 50. It's entirely reasonable as an approach. Yeah. 53 as min versus 54 as naive min. I think we'll have to see what the top does, but I don't think there's a huge difference between those two numbers either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, was it, did you get 53? I must have goofed up somewhere. Oh, I did not get 53. <laughs> oh. Who got, where did the 53 come from? Oh, 53, has, oh, I got that to be the number. I did not get that to be my number. To make the- Theory min? Yeah. Because I had yeah. the latency calculations. I got that 53 was theory. Okay. Stop the rail gun, or how I learned to stop worrying about latency and love the rate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I think nice. I think 54 is like if the last thing that you do is project up uh, one of these and then bond it. Um, yep, that's what my yeah. The oh gotcha yeah yeah. 53 means you just throw away the last lead because that is a projection only input. Mm, okay, I didn't consider doing that. I built a test puzzle that had pieces that started way too far away from each other to be practical. That did hit in latency but only using one of each of the inputs and then other bunch of scaffolding. <laughs> it was barely helpful and took a couple hours to even put together, so I don't think it's necessarily what I would advise of you. Like, this puzzle does not lend itself well to starting at theory and working backwards, unless someone in the top proves me wrong by hitting something close to theory. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this kind of motif is particularly uh, nice for rate. Uh, where you just have a bunch of arms in a line. Yeah. <laughs> Regrabs cost latency, though. Right. But track loops are hard to program. <laughs> At so this... many similar solution names. <laughs> yeah, everyone here is about like, okay, yeah, this is the universal solvent in the first couple weeks of the puzzle existing. 
Congratulations, Panic. Your puzzle was hard enough to make us lose five years of collective knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it's also week seven. If this was like week two or something, there would probably be a lot more min cycle efforts. Yeah. I can hear all the new players aging into experienced ones. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the difficulty yeah, ramp up. If you at have the this end. much extra time, you can build the core completely separately and then just spin it out at the end. Mm hmm. Yeah, and I think this is like a. The very lowest um, latency path requires you to build these, like, the two halves sort of together in a way. Um, and being able to build them separately and then bond together uh, definitely simplifies things. <laughs> Caliurisa says, it's so cool that we have two great weeks. <laughs> so it's Cali Reese's who probably actually did a cycle solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is also doing a little Black bit of breaking right uh, <laughs> down here, bonding all of these things together, all of the material it needs um, to transport it across. So definitely some rate tech here. Alright, this is mine, also sort of a Great solve. New solution for. <laughs> Thanks for the playtesting panic. <laughs> Railgun. <laughs> yeah, I got the same uh, <laughs> Railgun <laughs> setup. <laughs> Damn, nearly trackless. <laughs> yeah, there's just uh, this guy and this guy here. Tracks. The track loop makes sense because of how many steps you want to take, and the translation after calcifying makes sense, so it's just a, kind of a free track loop build. Mm hmm. It is solved for convenience. Yeah, and the area could obviously be optimized here, but... Uh, yeah, the note is uh, submitted at the request of Spiritual Shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a only plus eight. So in terms of how much you're sacrificing to make this something you're willing to do, eight is less than everyone else we've seen so far. Mm-hmm. And yes, I did actually solve the puzzle. I was <laughs> <laughs> not playtesting their puzzle. <laughs> uh, next up, Cuckoo52. Primary tie. Yeah. Whoa. <clears throat> cool pivot here, uh, I must say, to get to these two multibonders. Cool waist chain that builds magically through the center. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, there's, there's no reason for this to be a waste chain. Like, it could have just disposed of the weapon, but I, he did. Yeah. Like, you can literally like do this. Ah, uh, but ah, but that takes up area, doesn't it? I guess so. I guess it is slightly more area. But... Uh, yeah, compared to the six lead, I would probably because all this is being taken up. I guess, except these two, but. Yeah, I'm sure that's more. Yeah, than just two, two atoms. So <clears throat> it's a, it is actually more area. <laughs> also, Spinny Burlo going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we've got the uh, week six tech here. Mm, yeah. It needs to deliver all three of the edges in different ways. One of them on the bottom. Well, I guess one of them in the bottom is just a different angle after. Uh huh. Ah, uh, yeah. It's one here. There's like three multi bonders used for the three different um, pairs. Also, apparently we have a 61 cycle pile up somehow. Yeah. I mean, there's only eight numbers left and 16 people. And I don't know if all eight of those numbers show up. Yeah, next up, username void. Pigeonhole principle strikes again. <laughs> My math teacher described pigeonhole principle as if you're putting holes in pigeons and you have put more holes in than you have pigeons, and there's a pigeon with two holes in it. <laughs> I love it's oh, I love that explanation. Such a good joke. But yeah, this one's using the latency from this uh, projection to use two normal bonders instead of multi-bonder for this. It's not clear to me whether it could have lost one more cycle 
Like it definitely has to move one too many times to get to the last projection. Mm -hmm. But you can't path from that projection anyway. Oh yeah. It's like where it debonds, you can't put it on a glyph that reaches. But it's it's not clear to me if this is one cycle short of what it was trying to be. Probably everything is cycle short of where it was trying to be, but still. Mm -hmm. Oh, it hasn't made one of the bonds. The silver, the silver to fire bond is also made on that last cycle. Right, and this just rotating it like this, it, it's hard to get all of them because you would have had to rotate it two more times anyway to get this bond. So <clears throat> it's not really losing <clears throat> any latency. Sorry. Next up, we have hastily converted plate has thought this almost <laughs> looks identical. <laughs> hey, good first digit. We got 59. Yeah. Skip the 60. Skip 60. Yeah. The first full solve that I sent Panic was, uh, hey, I finally got a good first digit. Yeah. And yeah, the original version of this puzzle had full triplex on the center, but it kind of would have been... That sounds like pain. Uh, it's, it adds latency, so cycles becomes much more doable. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, fair. Yeah, it's, it's really well balanced with what it is right now to be hellish, and it would make it easier to make it harder. Yeah. Easier to make it more complex. Yeah. Oh yeah, the <clears throat> apparently this yellow triplex bond is the loudest one. I did not know that, but uh, someone in Discord <laughs> pointed that out. <laughs> I just chose well, it because you can't the, use uh, the gray one. That's going to cause confusion. Yeah, the gray one caused confusion. I did originally try it with all three uh, triplex bonds, but it looked weirdly asymmetric because like one of them's twisting one way, the other one's twisting the other way, and the other one's just straight. And the other one is straight. Yeah, so I just went with this uh, yellow color because it looks cool. Next up, we New have solution to copy. <laughs> another 59 from Andrej K. Oh, it kind of accelerates out the second to last output. It must have an odd thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but somehow the last one, this uh, silver repair, is already there on the bonder instead of having to move it. Huh. Oh, I see. It's, it's kind of making that part faster the second and third times. And eventually, it catches up. Hmm. Wait, now I'm confused. Were you guys were you talking about the loud triplex bond? Were you saying were you talking like visually loud or audio? Actual loud. The loud. Yeah, they oh, have different I thought sounds. You were talking, I thought you were talking visually loud this whole time. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Nah. Yeah, do you have any sound on when you play with this magnum? I do. I didn't. I never noticed. I just. I like, don't. So I was not. I was like wondering if I had a friend and you in that one. <laughs> no, they have different pitches, and you can like compose a short song with triplex or something. No, but like visually, it's also the loudest color of yellow between red and gray because gray blends in and red's pretty dark, so yellow is the loudest color. Visually, I guess that's, that's also that was, true. Oh my god, this whole time I think you guys were talking about visual. The game design <laughs> harmonized its sound with its light. Yes, it is loud in both aspects. Mm. <laughs> Embrace symmetry. Is the gray the most quiet one? Yeah, gray's easily the most quiet one, visually. And um, audio, uh, like, uh, how, what's how, No how, idea. <laughs> In terms of audio, yeah. Oh, Jasper I figured says out yes. why this has that extra like sixth output difference. It would be cheaper to make a bi arm deliver the output, but it could not be done with that basic arm because it has to wait on the multi bonder. So it takes an extra cycle and couldn't reset if it wasn't a multi arm. But it's area savings to have it be done by two arms until the last one. So arm twenty six, you're talking about? 
I cannot tell the arm numbers with the resolution I'm getting. I see. Is it the one that's grabbing on this calcifier here? No, I'm talking about the metal side. If you oh. look at the left, the output arm is on a track for five of them, and then it's the non-tracked arm on the sixth one. Oh, I see, I see. Arm, yeah, that this... non-tracked arm takes nine cycles to get back to where it started because of a delay, so it would need to be a multi-arm, which costs a lot of area, which you can get rid of using this scheme here. I see, I see. So it's just uh, the amount of time it's taking for this to get up there. That makes sense, yeah, yeah. And then this uh, three-length arm just moves it up there right away. given what you have to take that long. Uh-huh. And yeah. I'm wondering why everyone suddenly seems to have synesthesia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up we have Moraconda with a 58. Nicely nice. done, two hours. Yeah, this <laughs> Oh, I see that she's taking her speed solve approach where every arm's a piston, we don't consider whether it needs to be. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's smart. Uh, it, the it's also a tertiary, yeah, right? so it probably doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, the comment is made in about two hours on the last day. Zero secondary optimization, as I'd be shocked if I lose by less than 50 area to the next solve. Probably about min plus five and 20th. Uh, <laughs> correct on the min plus five, but 20th, uh, yeah, this is not 20th. Everybody's yeah, 58 is solid. That's a great solution, and 13th is seemingly like, this is a strong field and you've placed reasonably well in it. Mm -hmm. is good at cycles. I think specifically at this rate, it might be more like a cabinet. If you're trying to do cycles where the output's every three or every four, that starts to be a bit of a headache, and you have to learn specific tech for that. But I mean, she's good at cabinets, so. Right. Hey, I see a projector that's not used under the like the, the topmost projector on the left has no use. Oh, this one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could probably tell the whole used area in projectors, and it probably doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that comment, Hella Jasper. The quintessence glyphs are pretty visually loud. <laughs> and yeah, this has an interesting uh, breakdown of the pipelines where it's making the silver pair up here and also the fully debonded um, uh, Quicksilver thing, and then passing one of the Quicksilver off to the other pipeline, which is all it needs. All right, next up. Yeah, the geometry of finishing off the product on this one is very different than stuff I thought of. Mm -hmm. We have people actually putting their cycles count in their solution. <laughs> we, have, yeah. we have approached the cycle solves. Yeah, next up Never we mind. have... This is, <laughs> this is a right solve. <laughs> yeah, it's got the same uh, rail gun. I like the handling that makes one of them silver, which is just the, like, the grab and rotate away and put it back arm. Oh, it's so, it's so compact. It's just How the railgun. How is this gun. so good as a railgun? <laughs> <laughs> Rotated Rotate 120, 120 means clockwise. clockwise. <laughs> and then it looks like a like a stormtrooper <laughs> rifle, except it's shooting backwards. This is a, on the height cycles frontier, perhaps? Hmm. <laughs> it's like a vacuum. No, I'm pretty sure like the, the build that I had might be able No, No, because it takes as much time as this is using to actually get the core ready for this sort of a build. Mm -hmm. This is really slick. Yeah, so I do also like the um, way disposal is handled. Oh yeah, it oh, just yeah. slips yeah, in there. Sneaks it in under the burlow. Yeah. yeah so and with the clutch swing. This one's pulling the fully debonded one first. And then the last one is the copper one. Huh. Yeah, because copper is what it gets by default through the railgun. It has to offset to turn one into iron and another into silver. I see. Clever. That's three handoffs. Yeah, I guess the only... This is extremely satisfying. Yeah. The only latency it really loses, I think, is in the handoffs in the railgun. I mean, and the way that it is building the core, it kind of doesn't have another option. 57 if you manage to never re-grab, but mm -hmm. building the core as quickly as possible and it's there just in time. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, because yeah, it has to spin around like that. Alright, next up, uh, RPO with Horrible Clangor of Machinery. Oh, I was rooting this for looks RPO. Like a psycho top 10. Song. Yeah, just missed top 10. No. Oh. Ever since Amalgamated Gold Ring, I kind of associate RPO with big solves, so the fact that you beat the previous 58th on area was... I was thinking, oh, it's RPO, so we're dropping to 57 now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is quite compact. Also, it's the same height as the last one. Sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, which push? I refuse to believe that this one looks plumper. <laughs> Maybe it scores work in the layers metric. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, this is uh, doing the same thing with two bonders as we saw earlier, where there's an extra latency to make that final bond just because there's not enough space around it to do it in uh, one cycle. Yeah, if you were allowed to overlap the two multi bonders, this would have cut a latency. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I should have spent time on cycles because this looks easy. <laughs> At least the previous soft did. <laughs> you can make it look easy when you're doing a really good idea and implementing it well. I think, though, it's definitely not easy to build solves in this area. Right. Well, I meant like uh, the previous soft looked easy. This one doesn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's still some real clever stuff in the previous solve, although, to be fair, a lot of it was around the secondaries and getting the, uh, like the let out. For Mm -hmm. I feel like yeah, the yeah. the previous like one, the... it was very just like the design of it made it easy because it had this railgun thing where all the quicksilvers were just hanging out, uh, ready to go. Like everything was arranged mm. so that you could uh, build it in a pretty easy way. So this one compared to which pushes solve has one extra handoff on the fire core and also one extra latency on the bonding, except that it is bonding two at the same time, saving two cycles. Mm. So plus two, minus two. Just trying to make sure that latency always makes sense here. It's the same cycle count in the end. Yeah, that makes sense. I do appreciate how this one nestles the output glyph quite nicely in between um, bonders and arms. Yeah, and pivots on top of it like that. That's probably a big reason this one on secondary, because a lot of these souls have had um, had to have pretty gnarly final swings, but this one does not, and it saves a lot of area. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hal Jasper also points out in chat that uh, this arm nine is particularly satisfying, where it grabs, moves, and uh, pivots all in this uh, eight period cadence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Right, next up. That arm gives me flashbacks to a design that never finished on mine. Mm -hmm. Optimized Burlo. Oh, we're at 57 now. Nice. Yeah, down to 57. Yeah, this one's compact as well. So this one does similar to what I was seeing in RPOs, but it doesn't do that second hand, or doesn't do that extra latency on the bonder. Right, it's just yeah, multi bond and then multi -bond. output directly. It still does two handoffs on the fire, but it doesn't do the extra ones. Bello spinny. Bello's always spinning, just sometimes swapping directions, so it's the same thing every time. <laughs> Yeah, in every eight, that's how you do it. It's four one way and then four the other way. This is a cool piston track loop cool with arms one and two. This took the area secondary really seriously. It's kind of a shame it's the 57 that we get to see first anyway. Yeah. I wonder if it's the only 57 we'll get to see. That would be a little scary to me, but I guess I didn't expect too much better. <laughs> well, next up we have Transcendental Guy with another 57. Nice. <clears throat> because the best way to throw away your trash is through the input, is the note. 
Oh yeah, that's a slick swing there. Yeah. yeah. The way everybody's approaching this is reminding of Mist of Dowsing. Of the good Mist of Dowsing solution or the others? Uh, like the overall curve of the Psychos primary. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, this so we is... got one person who figured out 53. <laughs> this is the... <laughs> uh, this one is a little bit different from that, because that one there was the ratio, like problem, whereas this yeah, one, the ratio like, is nice, it's just uh, latency. That's this was just latency pain. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this is doing two up, one down, and then one through the middle. Latency here, it's just at the very end here, with the output arm. There's like a, there's like a almost, almost like one or two one cycles, or two cycles. There, there on the table. On the table. It, With arm 13 there? And like yeah. all this it process? Fit. You have to get that over there, and it wouldn't fit if the pieces were in position already. Yeah, it doesn't quite fit as is, yeah. Yeah, you'd want to swing also this instead of this way. Quick, there's also a last quicksilver. Oh, it has to I guess that could be faster. as well, does it? Right. I guess that uh, could be a cycle faster, though. Oh, no, I just waits for the thing to come in. That Quicksilver could have gotten there way earlier. Yeah, it seems like this one's limited just by the geometry of the output, moving it around and getting into the right um, orientation for the stuff that needs to bond and promote it. And next up, we have another 57. Metric is great. This is also right? named Metric is right, right? <laughs> yeah. To be able to get four away from men with the title, this metric was raised. <laughs> You're really latency minded already, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, Chido did say they optimized their, uh, their solution to actually be a cycle solution almost last minute. I see. Well, they did a good job. <laughs> it's interesting how it passes off this Quicksilver over this uh, glyph here. The first one goes into it, and the second one it just grabs it and moves it over to this other one. It's actually a very um, tricky movement here, sort of passing through these two pairs as they go. Yeah, this is probably worth tabbing through one cycle at a time because of how many near misses there are in the middle. Oh. Yeah, this one as this goes, this one as that goes. My obvious oh, well, point is cycle solve is doing just enough on every single cycle, and it sometimes has to just barely avert that on. Yeah, I'll be pointing out in chat that this one does well to minimize handoffs. So you can see what those like uh, six hex track loops accomplish. That. Yeah, just long track loops. Just keep translating. <laughs> but yeah. Now we uh, take our next primary drop to 56. Yikes. Uh, Fiesta and Nightmare, <laughs> yeah. Fiesta's duct tape and zip ties method, which they used in Nightmare Fuel as well. It's two pipelines, too. Mm -hmm. So the this, notes. This looks like cycles. <laughs> yeah, so now we're getting to cycles rather than just uh, throughput. So the... All right, so now we're done with th throughput. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> In top seven, we have <laughs> actual cycle solves. Uh, and now for the cycle solves. <laughs> By my math, pulling one extra fire to catalyze a second pipeline sets Ethereum min cycles at 55. This solve creates elemental half flares and metal pairs with perfect latency, but loses one cycle during assembly because of geometry. Perfect 55 seems plausible, but the force geometry of the last swing added too much sprawl for me to manage. Despite the name and appearance, this machine is actually quite orderly by my standards. This characteristic is visible in the more aesthetic and symmetrical version at 266A 
which predated my jamming arms into the workspace. Yeah, the output place looks pretty symmetrical. So I guess 55 is theory min for two pipelines? I mean, it's theory min if you use a catalyst for any reason, but the second catal the catalyst would be for a second pipeline. Right, I see, I see. Yeah, this oh, I see uh, the catalyst. catalyst here. Jasper wants to, and I do too, want to see it from the cycle one to see how that catalyst gets there so quickly. Because uh -huh. you have to calcify it, water it, and then move it before it's needed. It's on the sl it's needed on the slower pipeline, so that helps. Yeah, so it threads the needle through the triplex, and it doesn't bond because it's made of oh. water. That's <laughs> good. right through the triplex bundle. That's nice. Yeah, it is kind of convenient actually. Also, in cost, uh, how duplicating onto this means that no triplex bonds uh, can be made anymore after you've done this. So. Yeah, there's never any two fires adjacent, so triplex is now a safe glyph for just passing over. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it takes about 16 cycles to get down there, I think. 15, 16. And because two pipelines operate much slower than one, it doesn't need to be there until cycle 20. Mm -hmm. All right, because this is the one that's being done first. There's also a little bit of difference, I think, because uh, the output isn't exactly symmetric. So like you can see the copper here oh, yeah. versus the iron here. And yeah, I guess there's a slightly different configuration of projectors here to enable that difference. There's also a lead storage to uh, save area, even though the area kind of did not matter. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also just because there's only one, I guess, yeah, as opposed to a waste chain. I guess one thing about theory that is important when you consider projecting only using the last input the fact that the lead can be thrown away means you do not need to double grab the input. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because you only need to be grabbing the quicksilver because that's the thing that is min latency. The lead just the can lead. stay on the debonder. And the second to last step where you debond a quicksilver from that lead, you you get to spend the last step where you debond the lead grabbing that quicksilver. So you just need two projectors, but you do not need a double grab from the beginning. Mm-hmm isn't full rate only because of possible area saves? Yeah, I think so. I think you, this could run at full rate. It's just it couldn't get the uh, um, lead to the other side. And also this catalyst, maybe the initialization logic wouldn't work. I don't know. We lost our flags. Oh. Straight in it. Maybe. I don't even know if that's the reason. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'll come back. Did he say anything in the chat? I don't know. I don't know. If he has to mention in chat, this can be full rate. And I mm. imagine that's what the 266 area was. Yeah, just area saves made it to be the batch uh -huh. monster we have here. Makes sense. Welcome. Back, oh, yeah. Hey, sorry. I just had a bit of connectivity issues. Hey, I was correct. It's top 10, but not top 5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have like an every two tunnel at the bottom that makes the iron pieces, and then the third input of every set of four goes up to the top to be a bunch of projections. Right, and this I this is kind of similar to what you'd need to do for uh, fifty three, right? Where you're like yeah, it was designed whatever. around. Let's see how fast I can go doing things as though they are at min rate, mm -hmm. or min latency. But a second attempt where I was aiming for fifty four just fell apart completely. So I didn't get to make a thing that was better than this. I see this why you know that it can put Burlo on a track. Yeah, it <laughs> needs to get into that center from a pretty reasonable distance around the swing. Yeah. And this one is building the um, triplex shape while bonding these pairs onto it, which I don't know that other solves have done as much. Yeah, this it has like two or three extra cycles swinging the last iron piece up where that piece isn't touching anything. Which, if you're looking at it from a theory perspective, that's just sickening. But like, if you're just going fast, that's all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also I do like the amount of projections you get in at the very end there. <laughs> right. Yep, all three from that stolen input. It's hmm. terrible for secondary to swing it like that. It's otherwise rather compact. 
But yeah, I, I find it kind of interesting how um, different solvers approach this, like going for a particular theory min, uh, just sort of solving it, or like going for a min that wasn't necessarily the theory min, because I think it, it affects the design of the solution a lot. Uh -huh. That sort of railgun approach is pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, I know, uh, Biggie, you pointed out that in an earlier solve, someone was also doing this. Translation is strong. Yeah. yeah, you have enough time to grab the debonded quicksilvers because each one is staggered by one other thing. So you just have to move in a straight line for a while. Mm -hmm. Which I guess is pretty easy to do. And yeah, I see this is the second to last one to be grabbed here. Yeah, because it gave me enough extra time, even though it was theoretically a bad decision, it was layout-wise a better decision. Yeah, yeah. And then next up at number five, we have Pentapig. Still at 56. Oh, Pentapig. Oh, wow, secondary okay. by Pentapig. And I mean, I'm expecting the Pentapig spent much more time on area than Cypher. Cost than cycles, while well, I spent next to no time on cost. Yeah, I feel, like the, I feel like Pentapig's the person to get main cost. So the note here is, both sides build their half of the output, then they swap those partial products and complete them. Oh, right, yeah, this is a two pipeline, they're just kind of interleaved. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like two, uh, two P. I think, let's see. So the first one to be built goes over here. Then we have the I second think track one. loops make it six P because I can see 12 cycle programming. Oh yeah, that's true. But yeah, it's interesting. The like first core to be yeah. made is this, uh, second one to be output here. Huh. This has the same like C as Fiesta's would if it were being looping. It was a 23 115 for Yeah. Mm. So of the 56s, mine's the only one to be operating at like one output per construction machinery. Right, like a consistent cadence. But despite having two pipelines, Pentapigs is much more compact. Than Who do we have left? Caliaresis Spiritual Shampoo. Uh, Starfix, and probably. Two more. Goodbye, uh, Galaxy. Maybe. And Goodbye, Galaxy. Oh, goodbye, Galaxy. All right. Caliaresis has a chance to catch up. Oh, and Bambi, yeah. That's a good oh, one. Oh, Bambi yeah, yeah, just those people. <laughs> Bambi debuted during High Gloss Finish with Minray, which was really cool. Goodbye, Galaxy. It's better than Here good. Go. It's good enough. It's error. <laughs> I, I think this is better than good enough. Uh... <laughs> yeah, this is it's a really compact approach. It still does the same sort of last bond and a bunch of projections at the same time. It's very structured like it would, would be Theory Man. It just needs more time because this puzzle has enough. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, it, it has to bond all of the things to the output. Although it's doing one of them as it's promoting, so... Yeah, there's one handoff. But yeah, it's, it seems very convenient to do the those non uh, like promotions past iron after it's been bonded into one big shape, because the iron is only on one side, so you just have to promote on this one side. Helps for the geometry, I think. That's interesting, because Goodbye Galaxy still mentions that if all three were copper, it would have been a 55. Interesting. I think I even though iron is further out of the way, there's an extra projection just for silver's sake that you could avoid. Actually, uh, we ran into right. a surprisingly similar issue when we were designing dehydrated water for the weeklies. Um, because initially we were going to make pure projection and heavier element of that puzzle, and we noticed that doing it like um, silver, copper, iron made it a harder cycles puzzle than three copper for that <laughs> as well. Mm -hmm. 
I definitely did get the dehydrated water vibes out of the, the metals being different in the uh, three yeah. Except for dehydrated water, it was purification instead of projection. Mm -hmm. Projection is way easier. <laughs> but yeah, there's, uh, I guess this is the one that turns into the silver, or wait, is it? Oh no, there's two here. One of them becomes the silver and then the other one becomes the copper. Interesting, yeah. So then the iron one just has a bunch of extra latency, I guess, that lets it move all the way around here. Yeah, the decision on how to do the metal with the two directions track loop worked out really well here. Mm -hmm. Even though it looks like a pain to program, because there's a three-arm and a four-arm track loop, so that's going to make a 96 <laughs> yeah. construction on every arm. Mm -hmm. But you do, what you do what you need to do. <laughs> right. And yeah, maybe a little bit like a, a Surrender Flare in a way, where you're moving things around two sides of a bunch of track loops. Oh yeah. You've, you've not had any comparisons on this puzzle that weren't also to very hard puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> Universal <laughs> Solvent, uh, Alcohol Separation, Surrender Flare, Nightmare Fuel, High Gloss Finish. You're uh -huh. in good company. <laughs> also Preservative Salt. <laughs> yeah. All right, next up we have a primary drop That input, that 55. input is pain. <laughs> Yo, here we it go. Bye, Bambi. And this is smaller in area than the last, so it would have won waited for the drop. Oh, oh damn. Oh. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that suggests another primary drop. Okay, so is Spiritual Shampoo going to get their first win? <laughs> Oh, it's spiritual. It's spiritual shampoo or Cali Rasis, and Cali yeah. Rasis only spent like a day or two on their cycle soul. God damn. <laughs> yeah. I guess a day or two if you like spend the whole day or two. It's quite a lot. This is beautiful. It's this just is, so mm. well handled. Yeah, the the get, all of these pairs are just put into exactly the right place. And the way that the final bonding works, where it makes this single bond first, then it fixes it up, and it's able to use a multi-bonders for the um, final two so that it can get no extra latency. Mm -hmm. that, that copper quicksilver pivot into the triplex shape is an early contender for pivot of the week. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So everyone who gets 55 or better gets the honorary beat Diggy in the Cycles primary uh, <laughs> achievement. <laughs> achievement unlocked. This one is also uh, calcifying this one sort of incidentally and then fixing it. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, but it really just works. That's funny. Because mm -hmm. of how compact uh, Burlo is pretty free. Really Really well done, Bambi. Spiritual shampoo and calorisis conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, spiritual shampoo. Indeed, this is a the Minlexi uh, solve. Both of the other ones have a worse um, uh. pre-building style build. Mm -hmm. All right. So next up, uh, yeah, congrats, uh, fifty-four, to Bambi, on number three. And in, yes, 54. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, and that's this a spiritual is... shampoo for the win. Let's Pog zoom champ out here. For one. Pre building. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense as a strategy based on the fact that my latency thing required things to be so far away from each other. Yeah, so kind of the uh, way to get 54 without too much trouble is pre building. So yeah, you build these six of these uh, pairs and then bond another fire to them. Meanwhile, you're... This is looking a lot like Mist of Dowsing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was a good prediction. <laughs> a really, really good prediction. Yeah, the track loop that delivers it being like storing them on the output is really slick. 
Man, I should have really just focused on the thing that I built that I felt was not useful where all the things were far apart because that would lead to this build order. I just didn't see a way to get two inputs useful on the metal side because it didn't line up the way it thought it needed to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and with this, there's still obviously a lot of geometry things to solve, but if you pre-build everything else, all you need to worry about is just one... Um, or I guess uh, like two of these fires per thing, and then like the promotion that you need to do with the um, thing that gets debonded, and then the copper one. So it's simplifies the problem a lot. It sounds like the two people who got fifty fours were in totally different area leagues as well, because Spiritual Shampoo mentioned their first was three hundred area. Yeah, looking at the so, list, yeah. it's uh, none of the area optimizations at 54 mattered. <laughs> They're just completely <laughs> separated from each other. <laughs> and I know that Spiritual Shampoo said upgrade. that like, after a few days, they just looked at area secondaries every time they opened the gate. Like, cut two area, or spent two hours failing to cut two area. Uh -huh. It's funny. <laughs> they expected a pilot to keep the area apart. <laughs> you know, that Spiritual Shampoo, I did the exact same on week one. I spent the whole time optimizing what was already the winning solve. <laughs> I did that on week zero, even though it's week zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you actually, you know, won. <laughs> I, oh yeah, I should read the note on this too. The first 12 exotic metalloids are buffered. Oh, wait, no, they no, become no. the iron and silver. Then the metalloids are pulled every two cycles to become copper and perform the remaining projections. The fires are pulled in the same 12 plus 12 to match the schedule of the metals. The plus one latency is mainly caused by the regrab on the leftmost triarm. In theory, using the last inputs for the iron instead of copper gives a spare latency to work with, but the geometry is much harder since it needs to be swung from the opposite side from where the projection is happening. This started as a failed layout for 53, which caused a lot of decisions that are suboptimal for area. I think 54 could get away without buffering, which would save a lot of the area spent storing and transporting molecules. But yeah, congrats. Yeah, my last attempts were at a 54 that wasn't going to be buffering, but they were so far from working because I realized the geometry wasn't going to put things where they needed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, congrats uh, to Caliuresis on second place, and congrats Spiritual Shampoo to first place. God damn, this is compact. This is an yeah. actual CA solve. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the comment is... Also does pre-building. And it's still buffering. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's a very compact pre-building. Uh, yeah, the comment is... This has a spoiler solve rhythm to its output. Uh, theory might permit 53C, but I believe practical min is 54C, which is fairly straightforward with pre-building, and I expect around five people at 54C. Also, curse for telling. It's fairly straightforward with <laughs> pre-building. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, you can make this uh, shape just completely separately. You don't have to be bonding anything to it. Yeah. Um, and then just bond the three things. Like, the actual steps for output in the pre-building case are not that complicated. I like that bonding case. Is that the end? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very uh, yeah. satisfying to watch it bounce around like that. Yeah, it bounces around like the like a like a like a gas engine stroke. I feel like uh, trying out chemical slag really helps spiritual shampoo on this <laughs> metric. I mean, spiritual shampoo is also incredibly good at this game for how recently they started the gardening community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just they are so good. You know, it's funny. I bet. Spiritual Shampoo ever the competitor is probably sitting here thinking all that time I could have spent on cost, damn it. <laughs> we literally just won. I don't think if you're not going for big cost, I don't think there's that much more time you can actually spend on it. Mm. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I, I remarked that the secondary battle on plus 10 did not sound like a fun time to me. Mm -hmm. So I, I said I would spend most of my time on cycles, made the 56, and then failed to make a 54. Yeah. But yeah, very cool solve. Um... Geometry is definitely the hardest part when it comes to cycle solves. Yeah. And like managing the thing like going on is like well geometrized. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting word, geometrized. 
<laughs> something of a geometer myself. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, the fact that you I can wonder what's the two area levels. they wanted to save. <laughs> the three multi bonders and the three uh, tri arms. Very cool too. All right. Uh, yeah. Congrats to everyone on cycles. We will now move on to cost. Let me swap out the auto hotkey here. I think Probably with top be five being strong, Spiritual yeah. Shampoo, Caliaresis, Pentapig, me, and Fiesta, all five of us got into the top seven. And then there was also Bambi and Goodbye, Goodbye Galaxy. Galaxy. Yeah. But this is consistent with the global standings that the five of us did this well. Mm -hmm. All right, so first up in cost is... The five of you actually did cycle solves. <laughs> rest of us were playing with the right secondary cycles metric. <laughs> right. But yeah, so first up uh, in cost is Topo Mouse, the solve called Eco. Got this. We got the slow solves now. Mm hmm. And yeah, this one is the min glyphs that you need. So you just need this triple X, the calcifier, duplication, single bonder, single debonder and uh, projection. And I guess technically you don't need the disposal, so I, I don't know if you count that as minglyphs or not, but... But yeah, the fact... Know, that just an extra 65 mm -hmm. handling. Yeah, being able to use disposal uh, definitely makes this puzzle easier, and you cannot use it if you aren't using a track, so... You aren't, there's a lot more problems than just the disposal when it comes to just not using the track. <laughs> hey, Panic. Mm -hmm. um, when you designed the puzzle, did you design it um, with both metrics in mind, or was it like cost first or cycles first? Uh, it was cycles first, kind of. Um... Yeah, this feels like cycles first, and you know, and then Panic looked at cost and was like, huh. <laughs> yeah, that's basically how it went down. Like... <laughs> Like, wait a minute, this is uh, very <laughs> dubious. <laughs> Extremely it's potentially dubious. the hardest cost puzzle that has been designed about cost. <laughs> and it was not designed for cost. Yeah, it's... It, it... <laughs> Most puzzles that are hard for cost don't seem to be designed for cost. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It, like Eyeglass Finish was thread. designed for cost and cycles. Like, the fact that I put a Vitae in Eyeglass Finish at all was because of cost. And feeling uh, like a single atom input was too cruel to spring upon the community. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, actually, this puzzle was kind of designed for aesthetics first, um, I, I want to say. Yeah. That's, a, that's most of my puzzles, aesthetics first. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, 175. Zoom in a bit. Four. Um, 5381. Oh, and Burlo is also on a track. Neat. Yeah. Uh, text is, I still think that 155 is possible, but after trying a bunch of different layouts, I just wanted to get this over with. And so I made a 160, although yes, it's a 175 because of the three tracks, because of wheel collision that I didn't want to fix that extra cost. Uh, <laughs> 53 AT1. March 10th, 2023, human time. I wonder if we could... Wait, why do you have two trays in the speed? <laughs> hmm? Oh, that's a uh, zoom mod. What's up mod. with the tray? It's... That's, that's zoom mod oh, does that's, that. that. Oh, yeah, right, because you're zoomed. Zoom, yeah. If I'm normal yeah, zoomed, the... but it, see it moves down. It gets zoomed with everything yeah. else. Zoom mod huh. draws stuff twice. <laughs> I think they places. I think they both work, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's probably the, the source of the double clicking. Because probably if I click oh, here... Oh, maybe. It's yeah. clicking on both of these. Yeah, see, it does the click on the bottom one, too. <laughs> both elements oh, received. Oh, that's where it's from. <laughs> <clears throat> we could but probably yeah. do, like, the what notch ab above normal speed. I'm pretty sure I saw this one's center handling calcify the fire and then the water. I have to recalcify it as fire later. 
Now let's see. Yeah, it builds all of these first and then does the fire. But it also salts some of the intended to be fire. It? it might do it uh, as it's manipulating it here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. And yeah, one of the big challenges for cost is how to do all this stuff when you have this burlo just sitting here um, ready to collide with anything that you swing over it. But yeah, just making all these bonds and then fixing up the salts to be fires. And yeah, so this is four track, um, which makes it seven track. Oh, yeah, yeah, four track here and then three track here. Yeah. And he was saying something like, I think three track is possible, and zero track is theoretically possible. Mm hmm. But whether one can perform the three track or the two track miracles. Oh, it's a piston. Yeah, or, here's, or... here's <laughs> this one technically has zero track. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Piston costs 10 Wonderful G from title. I love it. <laughs> discount store. So this is it's 30 actually, G. Do I it's also only like 10 cost more than <laughs> with the track. Right, yeah. I wonder how many 155s we'll see. Mm -hmm. And the piston definitely lets you get a lot of movements in uh, that you wouldn't be able oh, to yeah. with just a arm. So it's piston pretty... has a whole lot of access points. Quite a fast soul. A whole lot of 18, useful access points. Eighteen fully usable access points instead of the single arm on tracks twelve or three tracks uh, eighteen, but they're awkward. Right. <laughs> Throw back to when pistons used to cost 30G in Opus Magnum. Oh. Yeah, that would have actually made this to be a, an easier min plus 10. 150, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would have mattered for this one, for this yeah, puzzle, quite yeah. a bit. Probably the it piston. probably would have mattered for a lot of cost puzzles. Mm -hmm. There's still a GIF on a, a subreddit of Alchemical Jewel with one piston that costs the same as it with one track and an arm, or two tracks and an arm now. And people will reference that as the min cost alchemical jewel. <laughs> Misleading to not know all the history. It's been, what, five years now? Like, come on. It's probably linked on some Steam guide or something, which mm. I don't know about, but they would know about. Uh, yeah. And yeah, next up we have Andrej K with 150. It's our 150s. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, all right. So this is kind of wonder. Interesting. Yeah, I so... guess the question is, how long do we stay in the 150s? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, yeah. So 150 is like probably min... quite a while. <laughs> Practical cost in a way, because uh, you can access a disposal. You can um, access, like, you have uh, uh, 12 access points here, so makes it much easier than trying to do it with a single it's one. It's not all the access points, but uh, you can get most of them. Mm. Yeah, I definitely had some half access and even no access bonder in my 150, but I don't I know no how much triplex. Oh, that's funny. I guess you can get away with that. I built triplex as its own thing. Uh -huh. But yeah, it's going to be a secondary it's... race at 150 for a lot of this lineup, and probably 140 exists. I would be shocked if the community no one took it, but yeah, secondary race at 150 sounds like it's really difficult for me to engage with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, indirect uh, burlo is definitely a thing because you want it to be as far away as possible, and it's not too hard to swing something over there indirectly, so... Also, uh, disposal always takes up two access points, so that sucks. <laughs> right, yeah. Just to uh, make a waste chain. To make a waste chain. <laughs> the, the space from calcifier to disposal and a cost solve is really funny to me. Like, it swings that whole almost complete product way over to the top right, and then way back down to the bottom left to turn into the water. Mm hmm. 
I yeah, mean, this is the slowest one. Last yeah. of the, uh, this is the first of the one fifties. Right. All right. Next up, we have Gecko with a playtest solve. Two thirty-eight, twenty-three eighty. Is this the only playtest solve? Uh, Hexen has one too. Ah. Um. Yeah, the comment is the extra glyph is now removed. Oh. I think there was a... That extra glyph. <laughs> <laughs> How does it manage to get things past the extra lead then? <laughs> I guess this Just is... Oh, yeah, there's, oh yeah, yeah, there's some conditional of... stuff going on here. So this is uh, truly min glyph. That's a... That's a smarter way to put the inputs. I didn't think of that. It doesn't have, like, passing through... It doesn't have the issue of passing through the inputs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you can see where the lead stick would be on each output. It stays out of the way. Speed this up a bit. It's out of the way until it needs to dupe. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm glad that it's conditional because doing 60 just to handle the lead would be really sad. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. But it does give you more access points, so doing... maybe it maybe it can be faster. I think you can definitely go faster with half access stuff, allowing disposal. That's what I banked on how I built my layout. Who knows? Yeah. Next up, uh, Zidris. We are back to the disposal. Cycle count. 2179. Yeah. This one has disposal. Yeah, but this I, what does this have access? Half access uh, projection. projection. And calcifier, but that's like not even impactful. Right. Yeah. And duplication, but like we're kinda ignoring <laughs> calcification and duplication the and the access, the access equation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, the half axis projection is not a uh, huge deal at all because you're dealing with these pairs, so you can just swing the pair mm -hmm. over there. And it's no big deal. <clears throat> and yeah, loops. So yeah, this layout seems pretty straightforward. Um, pretty much everything has full access, so you can move things over other things. Only complicated okay. thing is... Uh, One feature of bond preserving is you will always have something bonded to your metal, so it's easy to make the metal end of projection have access. Right. All right next up we have Transcendental Guy. Min plus 1925. Nine. Is, I wonder how low it goes. Yeah, it's doing some interesting Quicksilver storage over here. Doing this up there. Oh, hey, it's a, it's an accessible calcifier. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, this one has a half-axis bonder. Interestingly enough. All the bonds you need to make, if you if you make triplex core first, all of the bonds you need to make are pretty easy to make. Half access or no access. Mm -hmm. This does seem to require a lot of regrabs and repositioning, though. Yeah, yeah the getting stuff out of the way is easy. But yeah, there's that final pivot there. I wonder, is that to avoid? Does that avoid get something getting unbonded, I guess? Probably. All right, next up is more. This is hard enough with track. <laughs> Morikanda. Why is the parentheses spinning? Okay. Oh, because the Burlo is on every. <laughs> yeah, I added something to the auto hotkey to detect spinning Burlos. Uh, so that's in the overlay. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's in the metric part. <laughs> Amazing. 
<laughs> oh no, there goes our flex internet again. Oh, uh, see ya. That's a lot of jank for the triflex. Yeah, this is being built in a very uh, odd way compared to our previous solves. It's similar to how, I guess it was Andrej K did it, where the triplex was stuck onto metals, which meant that the triplex bonder access was weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess this is a half axis uh, triplex because this is the one you're looking to use. So full axis bonder, okay. but half axis triplex. I guess that makes sense then because yeah, you want to build your bonds first and then uh, position uh, properly for the triplex. Actually, it's a one third axis triplex. <laughs> <laughs> Although yeah, it's only the yellow one, so half. Right, right. But what is a half-axis calcifier, really? <laughs> Hilarious. And yeah, the half-axis calcifier is when you catch the essence of the calcifier. <laughs> it's when you hold it down, but you never release the button. <laughs> TJ Henry Yoshi in shambles. <laughs> yeah, using all the quicksilver from the first input on the silver is smart. Yeah, yeah, because then you can get it off the field. All right, next up from Tweedle D, another spinny solution. Oh, not next. <laughs> it lags. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> It has disposal. Does it have a reason to lag? Um, not sure. Spinny. <laughs> no. Mars didn't. It's it's not. I, okay. If it's lagging, it might just be the stream, because it's not really lagging for me. Maybe on Discord, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's only lagging on Discord. Okay. It's not. It doesn't look like it's lagging on Twitch. Yeah, yeah I was I looking at the Discord stream. Right. This makes length three arm look like the way to go. Mm -hmm. Granted, we're only at 20th, but it does seem to have very little struggles getting the pieces to the next place. Although, yeah, moving the um, metal onto the projector does look a little bit clunky. Mm -hmm. And yeah, having to debond and move it back and forth uh, every time. Yeah. I mean, maybe a different order would help where you make more Quicksilver first, but then you have to store it somewhere, so. When looking to optimize cycles, I think since there's three metals in every output, then, and the metals take a bunch of steps, making those steps efficient is the main place to focus. Even if it means your triplex stage is a little awkward, it's much better to have awkward happen once than it to happen three times. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, next up we have Ebenov, Stake and Ground. Surprisingly, I have not come up yet. Uh, yes. This so looks very much oh, like my three quicksilver first. Oh, but this this bonder is uh, has an access point, so it's not the same as mine. Yeah, doing it this way though, like passing the quicksilver to the next uh, full input grab. That's that's a tech. Right, because then you don't have to constantly be debonding it and uh, promoting it. You can already promote it. But you still have to do a little bit of that, but this one's definitely more efficient about it because they're right next to each other here. And yeah, half axis bonder, I guess, but it's not a big deal. Yeah. It gives you access to the point you want to be pivoting around, which is the one in the triangle from the bonder. Mm -hmm. Although with a length two arm, you can't really pivot around it once you've stuck another spoke on. Yeah.
But yeah, some. Oh, I just got the title. This is a stake in the ground. Right. Oh <laughs> yeah, stake ground. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How am I not next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these there's uh, pretty small cycles drops here, and it's a little bit difficult to tell um, exactly what the reasons are because you know the layouts are quite different and such. Yeah. This one's a three length. Mm -hmm. Has the same half access projection as um, Tweedledee's. Mm -hmm. This one does all the medals first. Given that I've gotten 17th in two different puzzles, the fact that this low effort min plus 10 is not even going to be my worst placement speaks volumes <laughs> to how hard this puzzle was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to see those min cost solves. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling the same as Bist is like, I'm surprised I'm not next each time, but I don't know what's between the two of us will be next. Are you almost? I'm definitely almost next. <laughs> I, I think. I'm like, uh, how many cycles away? Nine. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh. you're before me. Mine's a 16. <laughs> I'm, I'm imagining like 10 people like watching this being like, how am I not next? And like, <laughs> it's just going to keep going. Yeah. All right, let's see. Indeed. Yeah. 150G dummy solution for my free eight points. Full access projector. That does lend itself to some convenience. And it didn't seem to have to sacrifice much because you're doing this kind of cursed triplex approach. Yeah, that's a very interesting <laughs> no access triplex thing. Um, but you just like spin it across and it works. I mean, Mara did the same thing. And I'm pretty sure there was one other who did it, but I only remember it happening on Mara's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, min so hard. I mostly to hit. did this because that's kind of what's required for no arm min cost, <laughs> and I've been thinking about that a lot. Makes sense. Yeah, Fiesta is mentioning that it's uh, min is so hard to hit that lots of people didn't even try it. Yeah, that's true. Um, I tried for it, so this has a lot of the sort of a lot of the tech from it, but uh, yeah, I never it's gave basic... it a chance to try, knowing that it would be probably. Like, if I had a lot of time to give this week, I would have given it a serious try, but I did not. Mm -hmm. Like, the access points are almost identical to what would have been the no track solve, no track single arm solve, except uh, I get three extra access the, points. Both, yeah, both sides of the, the bond and, the and then, yeah, also disposal. I bet that was one or two people who are like this will be a great week to optimize the shit out of 150g and mm -hmm. those people are probably gonna do really well <laughs> yeah, yeah probably <laughs> yeah next up we have um, with another uh, relatively small drop less than 100 cycles okay now i am certainly next <laughs> i like a cycle away <laughs> I don't even remember my cycle count. I just know it's 16 <laughs> something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this was kind of intended as a primary uh, race, but it did end up being a secondary race to a large extent. It felt like it was going to be a secondary race, to be honest. Uh -huh. I figured that the number of people who got men would be single digits, and that I also didn't think I could put in the time to be one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I think having. I don't know, the last week uh, boss challenge, I don't know. Uh, that's a good idea area for future tournaments. Area wasn't as hard around. as this. Right. I... Because area is mostly layout searching. Cost True. is mostly yeah. programming. Yeah. I, I found area hard, but I found this hard, so I can't compare them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one's doing some interesting input suppression here. It's copying, or mine copies this, I guess. I don't know which one to credit, but they're very similar. I see. Yeah, it lets it move the fire off without dealing with collisions. Actually, I think in a couple of, I did like a cursory secondary optimization where I moved the fire up 
so we'll see it. I see. Indeed, yeah, it is next. Pick your battles. Pick your battles, yep. I have full access for telly, you guys. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa, amazing. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, that's a clever projection. Yeah, that's what I meant about passing it back. Ah, uh, yeah. Each Both of the inputs for a half access Critelli, Biggie. <laughs> what do you even mean? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then this one is the only one that needs uh, to eat itself. Yeah, it needs say. to be passed back. Yeah. I also have to do a Burlo dodge just to save some latency on the, the output. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not much to report. I made this solve first and then thought, OK, this is all I'm doing for cost. I'm not even going to let myself consider 140 because it's going to eat my time and I don't have that time. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. That's what happened to me. It ate my time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next up we have Goodbye Galaxy. We all live in a trip. <laughs> a little bit of a lag. Oh, yeah, the, oh, uh, wax, <laughs> I, I, I guess I have to sing this. Um, in the town where I was born lived a man named Critelli, and he told us of his life in the land of alchemy. So we sailed into the sun where we found 150G, and we lived a life of ease because there's no way in hell I'm trying 140. <laughs> Amazing. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> this one has an extra it's fire. It was extra fire. Yeah. Uh, 6p, that's why I was a little laggy. <laughs> but yeah, this one has the same arrangement of the um, debonder and purifier we've seen a couple times. I mean, protector. It spends a lot of time suppressing the uh, metal input, which does give it a little bit more space to work with and prevent some handoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess this triplex is technically full axis, but it's uh, you have to have different arm orientations on both sides. Rips or flex again. <laughs> We've been requested to look at a picture of the Beatles Yellow Submarine, and it does have the same shape as the layout here. Oh, nice. yeah, it does. I didn't even oh, I, oh I didn't notice that either. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, so that's why it's there. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I think this, this one wins uh, for... Best shape. Yeah, best, best shape. <laughs> Thematic. Shape. Also, yeah, the warp fuel is fueling some sort of vessel that travels through space, but who's to say it doesn't have the submarine aesthetic? Yeah. <laughs> Got it. I guess this is canon now. Canon, this is what it looks like. <laughs> it's a slow-ass submarine, then. <laughs> Alright, next up... Uh... Have the test solve from Hexton. Nice. Three things are. I had thought at some point that avoiding the extra triplex bonds would be a little harder than it ended up being. It was basically never an issue. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it happened a bit for me, but it was probably because of my cursed triplex setup, but you know. <laughs> it's mostly out of the way. This is a really good mine towards the three grabs. It's a good solve. Mm -hmm. right, next up, we have is name Void. More very small uh, secondary drops here. Makes sense. This 
This one is taking a bit of awkward mo movement to handle the triplex, but that allows it. It's kind of what I had mentioned earlier. Like if your metal handling is more efficient, that happens three times. Right. And the metal handling here is definitely more efficient. And it can even do all this repositioning without making regrabs. Wait, this one has doesn't have disposal. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I see. Has some sort of conditional logic here. It's not even 6T. 6P. <laughs> <laughs> wow, managed to get the sub-1500 cycles on this 1P. The... The conditionals didn't even look like they cost too many cycles, to be fair. Yeah. Just yeah, it just looked like the, the process of moving metal back out of the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not even doing a stick. <laughs> that makes sense. You only need to make six of them. Yeah, that's cool. And I assume it just crashes uh, after making the seventh output? Yeah, probably. Yep. There it goes. Yep. Nice. Very cool waste handling tech. All right, now we're back to uh, another spinny solve. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Going a little too fast there. Whoa, congrats to Genius42. Yeah, number 12. 12 yeah. is pretty good as placement. Yeah, this half X has bonder, um, but very you can just pivot and then get all the bonds. So. The projector is even positioned so that the place where the metals can go allows the quicksilver end to be the access point, which works better for putting them under the bonder. Yeah. Yeah, because you just swing and then pivot. And yeah, the note is, I'll be impressed to see if anyone can do this without a track. Next up, Telly in the hole. Spiritual are calling this a buckles category because we all have a budget 150. Right? <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, no disposal again. Conditionals. Yeah, no disposal and uh, conditionals. Cat's been posting mysterious numbers in chat. Oh, this is going to do the same thing username boy did and make a, a little circle around Cordelli. That's why the title. Ah, uh, uh, I see. That's, Except that's that thing good. sort of more so in the way. I guess it only needs to be passed back and forth when triplex happens. This does make full use of its access points, and I think that's probably a point towards convenience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the lack of disposal meaning you can have more access points. And yeah, you, there's just one swing here to get to the... Yeah, but I guess here. the one empty access point that it has where you have the output, you can't fit a disposal because it would always take up two of them. Mm -hmm. But you're right, full use was wrong wording. Oh, there's a crash there. Yep, because of the waste. Yep. All right, next up is Kevlar and Trackost. Trackful cost? Uh. Compact? Mm hmm. Return of disposal. See, for optimal track cost, wouldn't you just use a single hex of track? Hmm. <laughs> I guess uh, he's got you there, Kevlar. <laughs> If you're confident, if you're confident enough that you're the only person to get the C 
single arm then single arm no track then you could do that the winning soul does that that will be the best flex i think i've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> i am wasting five gold to flex that nobody <laughs> can beat me <laughs> i would not have anything close to that sort of trust in this field now like no, i think no. back when pentapig was the only one to get high gloss finish with to be fair not even min cost it was min mechanisms mm -hmm. uh for me i don't know how easy it is for this puzzle honestly because the problem is the single atom input but the problem <laughs> yeah yeah this the only problem I mean, that's, that's the biggest problem i've run into i've the others seem more easy to solve easy to solve mm -hmm. you can attach waste onto a c shape if you do that Yeah, this one's definitely optimizing regrabs. Uh, you can kind of tell it's able to swing the pair all the way across the projector and onto the bonder. I also like this, you know, grab, swing, swing back. The build order is really convenient too, where two inputs make exactly one bondable thing before you start to make triplex, giving you that little bit of extra reach to get to Brillo. Right. Because there's just enough to get to the uh, silver. And then you never need to touch disposal now that there's more things on the board, so it's on the wrong side. It's easy. Mm -hmm. Objectively optimal Cretelli. I, I guess. I guess so. <laughs> All right, next up, we actually have a pretty significant drop. Uh, Palo Jasper. Ooh. Cost plus 10 oh, for everything he's else. He's been very else. confident about his 150. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense given how small the drops have been, but... Does that mean eight 140s, or does that mean other people who are faster than this somehow? Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's one way you can do triplex. I do like that triplex. Darn it, Bist, you have me pronouncing it triplex. <laughs> I just parroted it. Echolalia thing going on. Triple X. Yeah. Yeah, this is really good about regrabs. You see everything it grabs, it's doing the right thing with and never shuffling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it does have to do this little shuffle every time, but. I'm trying to think yeah. of who's left and who I would think would be a surprise if they got to 140. Like Spiritual Shampoo, I'm pretty sure has already indicated publicly that their solution is 150. Yeah. Bambi, I would be very surprised at 140 because I never think of them as a cost main, but that would be a very impressive performance either way if they're still to come. Or they only did cycles this week, but I don't know. cost. Yeah, next up, a nine cycle drop. 10G for a wow. much happier life by Fiesta. Um, so in the, in the note, Fiesta says, I made a min G solve that jammed after three outputs. I submitted it as a showcase. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, for min plus 10, the puzzle was quite approachable. This was fun to build and program. I'm glad you liked it. Probably had enough time after attempting that. Yeah, I from what I've heard from people in DMs, uh, the waste handling was definitely a, and also I mean yeah, the waste handling was definitely a challenge for us. Mm -hmm. There is one access point that is just like gone that you have to manage and shuffle around constantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was so... getting the impression that you make a C shape because of the existence of the fire atom, and then the C shape is just a brick that becomes bigger as you add the lead to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I imagine how you would handle the waste. So Mr. Puzzle hasn't shown up, and I could see Mr. Puzzle being one of the 140s. Maybe. 
Hmm. Maybe a stack like approach. Hmm. Mr. Fuzzle loves doing the stacks. <laughs> I believe this is a 33 cycle. It's a little bit laggy, so I guess it, this is. Uh... Oh, yeah, no disposal. It's 60 and it's spinning. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's why it's lagging. It. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it doesn't look like it's lagging on Twitch. It, it it's <laughs> lagging for me on my PC, so it might just be because it's 30 FPS. It's not a, uh, it's not below oh, okay. 30 FPS, but it's definitely not hitting 60. <clears throat> okay, right. <laughs> yeah, I thought people who said area last week was as hard as cost this week were crazy. When I heard that come out, no, 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 no. <laughs> area was. I mean, I guess I found a layout quickly, but programming is hard. Uh -huh. Program, yeah, but at least you know you're gonna get it. <laughs> area, you only have to consider like oh, you almost only have to consider final swings. Cost, you have to consider every single part of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the fact that this doesn't have a disposal gives it full access to everything. And uh, yeah, it can swing these uh, Quicksilvers without doing a little Eight. jiggle. It's much faster. Having a full access bonder almost kind of makes it more awkward, and I'm wondering if angling the bonder would have improved. Because mm, you're making some bonds. Of that yeah. Yeah. Oh, but then you have That's to build the lead waste chain, which wouldn't work. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, next up at one, two, three, four cycles, we have Bambi. Oh, incredible! Cost. Do be like that. It do be dubious. This is so much faster. Like that's a incredible cycles improvement. I'm really I'm liking this layout for the um projection a lot. Mm -hmm. And that yeah, this is cool. no access bonder, that makes sense. Yeah, but you can pivot up into the bonder while you're building the triple X, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think putting the bonder in a place where you all, all you have to do is pivot is a. Uh... Pretty cool tech. Spiritual shampoo mentioning buckles makes top five. <laughs> buckles makes top five. It does. Yeah. Watch it like get top one or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I really I like know, this. I think have confidence cool. in Pentapig, Calyuresis, and Mr. Puzzle at the very least. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this one does the thing of getting all the uh, Quicksilver ready so that it doesn't have to constantly bond. <clears throat> it's also just this deep, this bonder placement is so cool how you can just bond to the pairs here while you're doing triplex. This is real smart. It's also smart in whether it chooses or not to go for 140. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it nearly got top five. Yeah. All right, next up I is... I would imagine that every solution we see at 140 took us so much more effort mm -hmm. It's not. Ta -da. Uh, rip. The still got faster by even 100 seconds. Yeah. That's significantly faster, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to do this well, and then they kept... Hanging around 1400, 1300, and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, you say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does so all of this with my regrab. figure out how the hell it's so fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's got access points. Yeah, and it's not doing a lot of regrabs, like. I think especially this, uh, where it's like this, and then pivot around here, do this, and then swing onto bond and pivot, pivot. That's like really clean. Uh, oh yeah, so the comment, theory min is 140, but that requires half axis bonder, debonder, and projector, and no access for the other glyphs. Plus, you need to manage lead waste somehow. 
I'm running out of steam for the tournament, so I settled for this. It's top five. Uh, and so oh, congrats boy. to the wizards with the wherewithal to weather the monstrosity <laughs> of true men. All right, number four. Are we there? Nope. No. Oh. Still has to come uh, <laughs> right. Is this spiritual shampoo? Yeah. It is. Gotcha. Oh. One, one, oh, They're claiming that they had the likely fastest 150, and this seems to be consistent. You know, it could be so a shampoo game. seems to be optimized for points times time spent. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, it could be a sneaky chance for um, min cost. We haven't seen Winter's name come up yet, and Winter's a cost main, if I'm not mistaken. Have they submitted? I don't know. Uh, um, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Never. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I remember there was a list, and I don't think I saw Winter. Rebix hasn't shown up. Did Rebix submit? Yes. Who? I wasn't sure if Rebix bothered. Yeah, I think Rebix are one four one fifty. All right, number three. Eight cycle yeah. drop. It's still 150. Yeah. Eight cycles. Each reveal is going to keep pentapeg. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so everything that made Celestial Thread difficult is present here, and quite a lot more. I'd be amazed if this got solved in a week. Man, even Pentapig opting into the secondary race at 150. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was yeah. only one player who I thought might have actually got me in cost because Kelly Reese's mentioned spending a lot of time on cost. So that that was my pick heading into the stream. Mm -hmm. The metal handling on this is so slick. This is very clearly faster than the others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. Mr. Puzzle, Spiritual Shampoo, and Pentapig both have a all seem to have this similar looking idea with the um, projection, and it's paid dividends. For yeah, them. I think it's really the yep. same algorithm. Like where you are, yeah. you have the the projector and the debonder in this arrangement, and you can just swing over with the yeah, well, disposal nearby. Yeah, because the solutions are are one p. Like we're at we're at like single instruction saves here mm -hmm. i think like this I, I would oh, estimate yeah. i would estimate this is eight cycles and... that's two latency on one rate <laughs> i think yep. this one's 6p actually i'm not sure if there's any uh optimizations at the end but i alt click mm -hmm. i think it does go all the way it probably yep. like doesn't yeah. dispose of the lead mm, maybe maybe yep yeah 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 so maybe that's the eight cycles. <laughs> uh, probably not though. It's, I think there's. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it might be like two of the eight cycles or something. Oh yeah, you just didn't dispose lead. Mm -hmm. right. Two left. Who do we have? All right, number two. It's Caluresis. There it is. At one forty. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Six thousand cycles. <laughs> but someone did it. We did. It comes the pain we train. did it. <laughs> Why is it so laggy? Uh, oh, that. So yeah, <laughs> it's six. It's six p. Um, yeah, but it's only six thousand, quote unquote, only six thousand. Yeah, yeah, that'll lag it. Maybe it's because there's a second arm, like the burlo. Lustrous yeah. syrup tech. Yeah, I think that would be useful. But, uh... that, the way that you can make the half access bonder, half access b bonder into a slightly more palatable approach is the Lester Syrup deck. Mm -hmm. That's such a cool tech to have seen revealed in the weeklies. So it's like we have that tech now. <laughs> but yeah, the way it makes this weird bonded shape... Uh, How does it to get to the... deal with the waist? Yeah. <laughs> that could also be why it might be 6p. So yeah, let me read the note. Um, every time I thought I figured out a repeatable process, the next product introduced a new challenge. I was worried I would get to five products, then the six would be impossible. The last bonds forced the bonder to be radial, 
Uh, and debonder needs to be next to the bonder to avoid generating massive amounts of waste for scaffolding while disassembling the caltrops input. Uh, given those constraints, this was only, the only layout I found that had enough room to manipulate anything. So yeah, the waste handling um, is not done in a uniform way. Oh, so it's inconsistent waste handling. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. And yeah, there's the first output. Ha. <laughs> Here comes the pain train. <laughs> I'm pretty certain I watched that entire product get made, and it still felt like a magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the part where it made the the center into water, but it looks like you just suppress the. Uh... Yeah, you just suppress the input, pass it over. That's probably the easiest part of this puzzle when it comes to min cost. So yeah, the waste handling for this one, it has to bond it to the product. Um, oh, it just bonds it, it to around. the exterior. Yeah. And then it has to... Kind of, sort of, celestial thread style. <laughs> right. And Stick it... it on the end. We'll deal with it later. But it's not a an infinite, so you do have to take it off again. Um, which it does Inconsistent. Oh, yeah, that, looks, that looks consistent. <laughs> well, I think the way it's bonded to the... I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure... It'll crash into stuff Maybe eventually if you just grow that way. Yeah. Yeah, in inconsistent oh. waste handling is such oh. a nightmare because you don't just have to solve one problem. You have to solve six slightly different problems. In this case, it might be like four or five because you got away with the second one nicely. But yeah, you have to solve like this a slightly different problem, like in a completely different way. And you never, you never know if it's actually going to just fail or not. So it is... Inconsistent waste handling is incredibly scary to deal with. Yeah, and you can see here that the, these two LEDs are just like hanging out. They're not in a bonded pair. <laughs> They're not even connected to each other. They're not yeah. a stick. <laughs> also, this is the first Revix win, isn't it? Yeah. Assuming yeah, it's Revix. Yeah, calling out. This is now everyone in the top eight has a win. I don't remember if Revix had a cycle solved, but that would determine whether or not they've passed me in the rankings. Uh, I don't believe so. And now we make this... Rebix is a slow metrics main. Mm -hmm. So now let's see how it makes the... How it gets over to that burlo over there. I think it just pulls one input and then pivots. Oh, it does that. Clever. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a pivot with this sort of... Uh, I like that a lot. Width chain. Convenient. That, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah, it keeps the burlo very far out of the way. Right. It has all the inputs on the burlo on the same side and just does everything on this side. Um, with some suppression occasionally to do some tricky geometry stuff. We've been going pretty fast this stream. We could probably spend a lot of time on these. Yeah. <laughs> it's only been two hours. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So now we have three waste. No, oh, and it made it into a ring shape, so it didn't collide with the input this time. I think it got to kind of copy what it did for the second output on the third. Mm -hmm. Does it? That looks like a different arrangement of lead on the intermediaries. I think it was like this uh, before, and now there's it just... It has this to build problem. it out this way, kind of. Yeah. One thing that looks very difficult with this layout is uh, accidental deep bonds and deep bonds. Yeah. Honestly, difficult is even doing the intentional bonds and deep bonds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. But like doing the intentional bonds and deep bonds while also avoiding the unintentional ones. Pain. Yeah, the less syrup bonder pair does. 
have enough power in manipulation to get you a lot further than I thought. That's a very powerful thing that took the community a while to find, but I'm seeing it used here to great effect. Mm -hmm. And yeah, both cost puzzles this tournament, uh, that was a important tech. Mm -hmm. Except this, in this puzzle, that only gets you like part of the way there. Uh -huh. and yeah, I wonder can... if Revix did the same thing. You can see uh, the waste handling complication here, where you have the three leads just sort of around the yeah. edge, and wherever they end up. Just... <laughs> this is a. Uh, they're just wherever is convenient. Yeah. Opportunistic, yeah. Opportunistic waste handling. I think my question, goodbye, Galaxy, wasn't whether Rebix would lose any places, but since I have only literally three 1,000 to the point lead on Rebix right now. <laughs> Uh, if they win and I get 16th, 15th, then it's a huge shift. But if they didn't submit, then it isn't. Yeah, as long as Rebex is a showcase, then we then they can keep their place. So here we're pu pulling an extra input as part of the waste handling. Uh... Wow. That's... Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that Rebix got 140 and congratulating Kali for programming what looks like a nightmare to program in chat makes me think that there's an easier way coming up. Maybe. <laughs> Seems like Rebix found an easier way. I hope there's an easier way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we have this big <laughs> ball of uh, that honestly junk. Looks easier to waste hand. Oh, <laughs> just catch another one. <laughs> Is there but a triple bond in the waste at six products? That would make me happy. <laughs> uh, I'm finally back. Stupid internet. Welcome back. I just, uh, wanted, um, I just wanted to say I'm, uh, I, I, I will take credit for Lustre Syrup cost being a metric in the first place because Saxton was like, <laughs> we'd really do that to people and <laughs> I will do that to people, so I'm glad something good came out of it. <laughs> We're not really afraid of doing that to people when it comes to cost. I mean, look at this puzzle. <laughs> oh, I really I like how that. I wonder now whether high boss finish is possible if the quicksilver is a single atom input instead of VJ. Oh. This. I really like how this bonder to bonder setup lets you walk atoms on the perimeter. Mm -hmm. It lets you walk atoms on the perimeter to a point, but someone did call out in the chat. Uh, there are bond geometries that are impossible to undo. Yeah. There are, yeah. Uh... Oh, this is programmed with OM clone, which helped. Mm. Uh, I see. And yeah, here we are on the last product. One day we'll reach a point where nobody plays Opus Magnum and Opus Magnum anymore. <laughs> it seems that the no, we won't. That'll I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll never I'll never cave in. <laughs> yeah, I probably won't either. I'll just stick to the mods. They're, this they're is such ass. a first <laughs> brick of nearly complete product. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard you like lead. <laughs> How about we stick a bunch of it to your product? <laughs> yeah, the one time I tried to make a solve with inconsistent waste, it was in the vanilla game, and it was absolutely brutal. So to be yeah. fair, OM clone does help a lot with brutal stuff like this. Here it comes. Okay, we got one the product. More bond. Not only is there a triplex bond in the remaining waste, but there's a triplex bonded tin in the remaining waste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the creativity required to solve each product is amazing. All right, there it is. Here we go. There it is. Oh, so Pentapig asking a very prescient question in the chat: How the hell Cali Races had the energy to program <laughs> this in week seven and get what is essentially min practical cycles? 
<laughs> Absolute accomplishment. I think Calyresis is because he's kind of nipping on the heels of Pentapig was seeing this as maybe his chance to push. Yeah. Possibly. Mm-hmm. May or may not have spent a lot of time on this week. <laughs> if you want to have a chance to win the tournaments, weeks the second to last week is a hard puzzle for a reason. Mm-hmm. And yeah, congrats on a uh, one forty. All my homies hate Burlo. Oh, no. <laughs> Rebex had pain with Burlo. I oh, see. Oh god, it wasn't even by that much. Oh, that's pain. <laughs> yeah, very close. Jeez, that's only a couple hundred cycles. So yeah, this one has the same uh, bonder de bonder. Oh, does this do things more conveniently? <laughs> yeah. So this one starts out by making. Uh, Oh, the C-shape. Nice. The C -shape, there we yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get that to work. He mentioned it also is one peeable. It's possible the Rubix, did Rubix make this one P and then six P to save cost? Uh, I think it might have been six P because of the way that waste handling worked out. Uh, oh, I, they I, just I, never. They I, just theoretically can make it one P, I, but that would make it slower. Uh, I didn't manage to make this shoe shape. If I did manage to manage it, I probably would have went for 140. I mm -hmm. made the shoe shape, but I had an extra uh, lead and quicksilver. Uh -huh. All right, so I guess to analyze this one, we need to talk about why the C shape helps in this particular context. Yeah. You can bond waste to it. And also, you can access the single atom input from both sides. Right. And yeah, use it to suppress this big input, um, so you can move the single atom input on both sides. Yeah, so it's really for the single atom input that you do the C shape here. Yeah, and for convenience, you can bond waste to it. I think I don't know how waste is handled here. We haven't had a single product yet. Mm -hmm. The good long width chain to reach Burlo yet again. Yeah. <laughs> That's something I missed so that I probably that's could have so done. Convenient. That's so cool. Because uh, if you don't do that, Burlo is way too close and it's hard to get the C shape in place. Just tabbing through here. So in the creation of the C, one Quicksilver was set for the product, which means that there will be a lead and a Quicksilver at the end. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. So that should get passed on to the next product, but you could 1P it still with conditional creation of that. Actually, I don't know how you grab a single atom in a conditional setup. Like grabbing the fires, you get to do that once, not twice. All right, so there's the product. And how is waste handled? So let's see it. By bonding it to the C shape, I assume. Yeah, so. Make sort of a question mark shape. Not quite. Oh. And it fixes it up. Now we have a it long C shape. It makes a longer C shape. <laughs> it makes a, a new C shape. Um, oh, yeah. I think that's really neat. Yeah, that's essentially <laughs> the same thing. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh. Oh, oh, I see why Burlo is Yeah, so, uh... <laughs> uh I per see. Perceptive viewers <laughs> may notice... Flute, so this is not the one to study. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I was thinking that it went... I was thinking that it would stick out sideways, but, uh... Uh, yeah, so I can read the comment now, I guess. If Burlo could get below the horizontal line of the arm entirely, the solve would be able to extend this C indefinitely. Saves about 150 cycles per loop. Sadly, could not find a layout where it saved cycles on the duplication side of things. So yeah, we will see what happens to this C uh, after the next output. Yeah, that looks... Speed it up a bit. That's the pain train. <laughs> Do they have to just grow the C shape out in a different direction? Would that fix the problem? I mean, it needs to be able to put an access point on the uh, left of the arm. It needs so like two atoms, a knight's move away apart. Oh, wait, you Not can't. Exactly yeah, nice right. Move, but... You can't do that. Yeah. Because of the shape of the... Unless you yeah. pull extra atoms? 
Let's see this what it does. This community is so dang impressive. It pulls an extra input. Oh no, it <laughs> just stops dealing with it and does it the calories this way. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the 150 cycles per output that this is losing? And now look, we have another C. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. It's all oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the 150 cycles per loop. <laughs> yep. So now we have our very fancy C, and it, it will be getting fancier. Just as well. make a new C. <laughs> I see. <laughs> right. So uh -huh. if you do that, it's one P. Yeah, I assume if yeah if you if you just do this uh, recipe every time it becomes one p. But I think the other one is faster, so there's no reason to go back and make it one p. Yeah, you're just because that's the painful part that <laughs> makes it one p. Right. Man, some, somehow Rebix is getting away with being the person who still says there is no such thing as dubious cost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's still the is uh what are the two puzzles that require track in cost? What are the puzzles that require track and cost? Are those provable that they have to have them? Um well there's a lot that are provable because it's like the flare ones, like surrender flare is the earliest example where you need track. Yeah, and like and like that's I'm pretty sure it's just straight up proven. Surrender flare does not need track for cost. What are you talking about? What? Or uh, I think it was a alchemical. Does alchemical jewel need cost? Not need track. Jewel. Good question, actually. And there's also the have, two. I don't have the cost the the journal, right, unfortunately. There's the two golden thread shaped inputs. Uh, golden thread shaped polymers in the journal. Boy and cable and lubricating oh, filament. Yeah. I think that require track. I'm booting up the campaign. Point? I'm booting up the leaderboards page for this one. I think, one. um, if I remember correctly, the reason Alchemical Jewel requires track is that you cannot create the center flare uh, yeah. without having track or something. Yeah, and Pentatech is, is, is one of your requires the clean example of that, where you need to bond two atoms, so you need the first to possible flare. Yeah. But yeah. you also yeah. cannot create the output with full access bonder unless the iron gets out of the way. Right, it's single atom inputs plus, so you can't like half Make access a, right. the bond. Yeah, yeah, you can't Surrender half access the with a single atom. That makes sense. Surrender flare has the multi-atom input, so you can actually get the arm to be on a half access bonder, or you can just link two arm, which will be half access and also already be out of the way. Uh, using a void calls out though, you can use two bonders. The same cost as using track. Yeah, but like just just use track. <laughs> well, Rebix has done it. Yeah. With a very clean yeah. C. Mm hmm <clears throat> Min C. Min C? <laughs> <laughs> well the minimum cycles at a cost. Minimum cycles at minimum cost. And this probably could be up. If somebody can figure out the burlo, this can definitely be opt way optimized. Yeah, maybe. Although uh, Rebix did say that moving the burlo caused slowdowns elsewhere, so it ended up not being a. Uh... Uh, I can move in the burlo and have an extra longer scaffolding stick that goes to it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe some optimization or uh, possibility for optimization, but yeah, definitely uh, very nice work, um, Rebix and uh, Calyresis on the one forty G, and uh, also congrats to uh, Pentabig for number three, and Spiritual Shampoo for a very similar solve at number four, or very similar cycles, and uh, and yeah, Mister Puzzle. Congrats to everyone in cost. <clears throat> the wizards. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I was very happy to see those 140Gs, so definitely mm -hmm. appreciate the work you guys put in. And uh, yeah, we can move on to showcases. We don't have too many showcases this week. Yeah, because both of the metrics take a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next, first up we have Spiritual Shampoo, 
with a CG version of uh, Solve. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, a lot of hex arms. <laughs> See. That's quite inexpensive. I guess this layout was already pretty well optimized. Yeah. But yeah, very similar um, to the CA solve, but. It's only nine additional area if I remember my numbers right. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it would definitely still be the winning CA solve. <laughs> that also makes this the CX solve. Yeah. Assuming it's the cheapest, is it? Uh, cheapest of the cycle yeah. solves. Callie's was expensive. <laughs> yeah. 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 Then. Next up, we have a submission from Mr. Pu Mr. Puzzle with Chill Overlap. Chill Overlap. Very cool bonding nice. going on here and the uh, duplications. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's a cool way to. <laughs> oh, yeah. Passing the, Pass passing the duplication into the center using overlap is very easy. Right. It's just this catalyst here. And it seems to be using an overlapped uh, projector here, but it's able to grab it. I guess, oh, because it's there's nothing on it during that cycle. It's, I believe, it's because you gotta you gotta debond first, so there's a chance to grab stuff. I see, because the debonder is lower priority. I don't think it matters if the debonder is higher. Oh, right, 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 right. Because if it's if it uh, had been bonded any time during the cycle, then it doesn't get recognized. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I like how this is um, the same rate as if you didn't use overlap, because it's input suppressing the fire every other time with metal and doing grabs on the uh, metal input. So it's still just the same rate as no overlap. Mm. This makes it a lot more clean. Uh, yeah. A lot easier. Oh, guys, I, 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 I won cycles. I'm three, <laughs> two, three less. Yeah, I did it. 51 C. Mm -hmm. okay, next up we have, uh, I believe this is a um, speed solve. By username void. Got that hex arm to deliver Does that the... Does not look like an easy puzzle to speed solve? Yeah, definitely. I think this is the only speed solve. I do remember them putting a dot D down and thinking, oh wow, people actually considered speed solving this? <laughs> I looked at it and thought, okay, cool, I'm going to go back to working on week six area. <laughs> <laughs> and there were also the, like, dog what? <laughs> Holy hell. <laughs> yeah. Um, you just know Rebix saw it, thought about cost implications over the course of the next three seconds, and then typed dog what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Uh, so this is called three No Cigar. Yeah, this solve consumed tens of hours ah. only to end up here. I successfully used the Pentapig method to choose intermediates and spent about three days programming the first products. But I never found a good method for handling waste, so three products is where this gets stuck. I don't believe I've yeah, ever gotten this, watch just mm -hmm, this close to success and come up short. I hope some other folks found a way to make this Minji monster sing. Uh, indeed. I feel that pain. I, um, I remember when I was trying to playtest the right promotion. Um, I think I made yeah. it about two or three. <laughs> <laughs> We wanted to improve min cost before we actually sprung that one on people, and I got like two, three products deep and couldn't find a good way to handle waste either. Mm -hmm. Except that was just kind of consistent waste. Yeah, that was just kind of a self 
made problem because I had a bad layout, whereas here it's uh, actually waste is just really hard to manage. Also, should we zoom in, Panic? Oh. <clears throat> yeah, this one... The... Yeah, it's really scary, and the fact that Calioresis and Rebix avoided the problem... Yeah, especially Calioresis avoided the problem. I don't think Calioresis is, um, avoided the problem. <laughs> avoided the problem. <laughs> is absolutely <laughs> not to be taken for granted, because it's it does happen, where you just can't handle the waste properly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think watching Calioresis solve uh, definitely uh, underscores that, just with all of the special case handling for waste as it goes through, like, literally every yeah, product has Yeah, I don't think Calioresis different... avoided the problem, they just... <laughs> he dealt with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is some fundamental thing that causes this to actually be unfixable, where that's the thing that was avoided. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the layout definitely has some differences. Like the triplex is uh, in a slightly different place. I think it was making some yeah, slightly different spot. That's still a convenient spot to do. You can do a pivot, pivot. Mm -hmm. um, the burlo is definitely much closer. Oh yeah, I think that's the issue. I think I briefly took a look at. Cost. I was worried about Berlo being an issue for min cost. It apparently is. Uh, it apparently is. Oh. Yeah, this is definitely looking a lot like seems... uh, Calyresis to get started with. Which yeah, it seems most of the successful uh, cost solves, min cost solves, have Berlo pretty far out. Mm hmm. And yeah, this is the last showcase solve, so we might as well watch it out to three. Yeah, they're sorted by cost. Unless somebody did overlap cost, I don't imagine it gets you. <laughs> oh yeah, unless someone else uh, submitted another one without any, because it just says zero if it's not solved, so. Oh, right. I forgot about that. With scaffolding mod, you could get 110 if the scaffolding was a free water item. Mm. This looks like absolute pain. Yeah. It does. When I looked for main cost, I was looking for something similar to Rebix approach. Mm -hmm. With a C shape. Yeah. Because I knew, because, you know, this puzzle has the exact same input shapes as a uh, silk cloth thread and that used the C shape. I was like, yeah, people already. Did the work in discovering that for me, I'ma try to use it. <laughs> yeah. And it is uh convenient to bond waste to if you can find a way to keep bonding waste uh to it. Yeah. Not colliding with anything. OG is still one forty. Can can you use multiple inputs to avoid that? I think technically uh, overlap doesn't allow um Extra inputs. Yeah, fair. Is it possible to get less cost than this than 140 that is? With any with like any, like every glyph is necessary for getting from input to output unless you are allowed scaffolding in place of bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um OG would definitely be um simpler though because you can use disposal. Yep. You can also like you know overlap the glyphs, right? So you can have more access to them. Yeah, like overlap calcifier and duplicator seems convenient. You can probably like overlap a bonder and a debonder. Mm -hmm. Like add a single hex. Overlap the triplex on the normal bonder because. Uh, oh yeah, they're basically the same. Because <laughs> you, you never need both of those on the same pair of atoms. 
I see four triplex. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, you have to undo that bond and rebuild it. In a... Okay, they did that just now. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the constant popping in and out, by the way, everyone. That's all right. Yeah, no worries. I wonder what problem it runs into starting from the third out, but starting past the third output. Yeah, we're going to get there soon. It's having to build um, another input into the product to connect all of the waste again. Mm. Mm. Oh, wait, no, that was just necessary for projection. I didn't realize that one of them wasn't already silver. And now we have a product. This is looking a lot like Cali Race itself. Mm -hmm. It's even got this specific thing. And that, that stops. As far as it got. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't show the problem that it starts mm -hmm. to. I mean, I, I guess. I mean, if I, only I guess... Zach had chosen three as infinity. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, cost is hard. <laughs> Indeed. But yeah, thanks for uh, these showcase submissions. And I guess now we can look at the next puzzle. Mm -hmm. So that was week seven, the last. Our computation puzzle. puzzle. And yeah, next. Next up is our computation puzzle, which we have two weeks to solve. So there won't be a stream next week, but after that, there will be a finale stream. Um, <clears throat> so the way I'm doing the computation this year is there are two puzzles, one of which is an easier puzzle, um, which kind of is similar to the full puzzle. So the idea of the easier it's one... A quality test puzzle. Yeah, so you there's these two reagents. The idea of a computation puzzle is that the reagents can change, and then the output um, changes based on those reagents. So if the two inputs are the same, you're supposed to output the um, this gold. But uh, if the two inputs are different... Oh, then... we have computation mod. <laughs> yeah, um, so I can load up. This is uh, something that uh, Mr. Puzzle sent me to demo it. So yeah, first one is a gold because they're the same. Um, now they're different, so you're supposed to output uh, salt. Different again, output salt. Different again, output salt. Different again, output salt. Now they're the same, so you output a gold. So that's kind of the concept of it. Obviously, um, you don't know what the order is, so this Mr. Puzzle just made this because uh, he made the mod, so he knows what order they're in. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, you, I mean, you, you, you sit, also know what order they're in, but uh, well, yeah, you just sit down and you just brute force it. You're like, oh, this one's salt. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Except you can't rely on that when the actual solve when you do the actual solve. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then the way that the points work for this is that uh, if you submit for this puzzle, the elemental comparator, uh, you'll get ten points. Free ten points. Yeah, um, but you don't have to submit. Oh, quote, uh, quote, free. Yeah, you don't have to submit to get 10 points. You can also submit the larger one. So if you want to just work on a larger one, that's fine. You don't have to bother with this. But uh, if you want to work on this one, um, too, then you can work on it first and get 10 points. And then maybe... I'll probably start with this one. Yeah, and it's similar. So then uh, now we can look at the larger one, Habitability Detector. So the idea of this one... Test case for, for solve. <laughs> Ooh, oh, 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 oh yeah. I the top right So thing. yeah, we have a... <laughs> Uh, we'll get to so that I, I did not focus on week seven. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Still got top five. Uh, yeah, that was a surprise. But let's di dial in the details. <laughs> no, I was here. far more interested in this. Yeah. So this is extremely cool. So uh, just to go over what the idea of this puzzle is, you're supposed to figure out, given this three atom input, whether it's contained within the larger six atom input going in the same direction. So like, uh, if we dial in like a fire for the last one. This is not the same direction, so you output a salt. But if it's 
contained in the input going the same direction as you can see here, then you output a gold. Um, and also, every time you pull this one, it's the same, but every time you pull this one, it can change. So we can go look at the uh, test case for this one from Mr. Puzzle. Uh, so as you can see here, this first one gets pulled, uh, and then the next one that comes out is different. The next one for this that comes out is the same. So the first one, it's contained within there. So we have a gold, because yeah, this one is contained in there. Uh, the next one, this is not contained in here, so we're going to be outputting a salt. Um, and then... Will we be able to download this mod? <laughs> <laughs> I will be releasing it once the stream's done. So... Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to see for forbid output conditionals. Oh, oh uh, yeah, that that'll apply to this one, huh? So if we check that, and this is uh, if for the real puzzle, output conditionals are uh, banned. So yes, here incorrect yeah, products may not be submitted. Nice, it even has a custom error message. So oh, nice. This is an amazing mod. That looks clean. Yeah, Everybody, cool. go get quintessential if you haven't. You haven't <laughs> even seen the coolest part. Is that, what is that where I, you can dial in the? Oh, that's that's not it. Is it this? So panic. Could you, could you, okay. yeah? Could you could you change it to air air air, up the speed a tick or two, and okay. then hit that double arrow button. Oh wait, and disable forbid output conditions. Oh okay, so air air air, speed up. Oh, oh so it does six. Does it reset it back? To oh, yeah, it does. Okay, okay. Now I see how this is working. So this is checking. Oh. It just keeps checking with different inputs or uh, different patterns. So you can use this to sort of this to verify, verify your solve. The cycle's after. number is resetting as well. It's running all of the instances in one puzzle. Uh huh. It's not oh, just yeah. that it completes, it is scoring them. Right, because that's how it oh. works. You have to restart after six. So it's like truly what the puzzle is. Oh, and now it's oh, done. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it completed. What does that mean? It got through all the test cases. That means it tried all the test cases. Yeah, ah, yeah. It went through. So yeah. So if you if you put does it on only test the one twenty eight of them like ah. on the site, or does it like do all um, of them? So so this is this is a different. This is not the same verification as what's on the website. Oh wait, oh, um, no, which is stays the same. which is good, I think, yeah, because uh, technically you're supposed to. And I, the depending on, I may run tests offline too, um, just to make sure the scores are right um, for all of the test cases, because 128 is not all of the the, the scores computed also, is the maximum amount like, of all. If you do a different match pattern, it just changes it to a different test case. Ah. Right. So the 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 inputs. So you choose a test case. The input stream is chosen for you. They are the in, input streams are mostly the same, but they're slightly different. It is different yeah, like, from what's on the website, though, because instead of I don't do the 128 test cases on the website, I do a different test case for each pattern. Just like the most useful six test cases, I would assume. Yeah, sort of. It's. It's, it's just something I threw together. Um, the test cases, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Sepentipic mentioned in chat, um, currently it does not keep track of... Um, it does not keep track of worst cycles in area. Uh, I could add that if there's a large demand for it, but I don't know how useful that would be because, again, the test cases are different this, than what's on the website. You know, the site kind of just does that for you. Right. Wait, sorry. What, what what were you saying? Um, the the testing harness that does sixty four test cases does not keep track of worst cycles. Oh, in the area. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, also, making sure where the metrics are worst case, right? Yeah. So the metrics are worst um, case, but for all six inputs being the same, um, for the uh, so it it basically tries the 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 metric definition is for all combinations of the match pattern and the sample uh, it runs it with all of the poles for both being the same just like runs, runs it, it to six runs it to six every time yeah and then for every 
for every every possible combination and then it takes the maximum over all of those i um okay. expect most solutions are not going to have that much variation um such yeah, that probably. the 128 test cases will cover it at least to you know maybe a small amount of difference but um how long would it take to test every possible combination uh i did some uh sort of I, I tested for my test solve and it seems like it would take about an hour and a half uh, single threaded oh. so uh, it should be possible to check but it will take a while an hour and a half for every single solve that's uh yeah although if every i every single person if, if i change the code to be multi-threaded it, it could probably get down to like half an hour or something and my test solve is not particularly so optimized so but it it, it is yeah. um a lot of time so uh, I'm kind of hoping that kind of you also have to account for some people submitting very unoptimized solutions. You don't want them to have a 30 hour turnaround. Yeah, but <laughs> at, I, I think I don't know. I, we'll, we'll see. Um, we don't want to wait a whole day to see the results. Yeah, in in the worst case, uh, we, we will have to compute some stuff after the fact. But uh, I think just by looking at a solve, you can usually tell. If it has some like Maybe, weird conditional, yeah, like probably we'll just verify it, the solves for all test cases after the stream and then change the scores accordingly. Yeah, I was. If I was, it like if doesn't it matter as if it affects things. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, definitely cool stuff with this mod. This UI is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The there is one drawback. In order to get the test harness to work, I needed to basically re-implement one of the drawing functions. So I I don't know how it plays with Zoom mod. Oh, but let's see. <laughs> it also it also ruins a few of the Fitzigu tools. So mirroring and track editing are the only ones I know that it definitely messes up. There uh -huh. might be some others that messes up. Oh no, the useful ones. <laughs> so yeah, Zoom there doesn't is... doesn't work at all. I, I can't zoom. The key <laughs> key inputs don't even work. But I yeah. <laughs> yep. There is there is a setting in the mod setting menu where mm -hmm. you can disable the computation tray. I see. Which is that thing in the top right corner. Right. That uh -huh. will get that will fix that issue by removing the tray. So it'll be the same kind okay. of computation setup as what the elemental comparator would be. I see. So I would just, uh, the better way to go about it is if I want to use the other tools. I have that disabled for most of the time. And when I want to test, just check if everything's correct, I turn it on. Yeah, that's that, right. that would be the simplest way to approach it. That would work. Not require me to tear apart three separate, uh, two separate mods in a. Yeah. Uh, you can always code. just merge them. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. Yeah. And I'm still waiting for the great merger of Zoom mod and <laughs> finally the setup is getting close to use of all. <laughs> it, yeah, it would be nice, but um, I and I think there's ways to change the zoom, like not while you're looking at the solve, but if you like change your screen resolution outside of the game yeah it changes it right so yeah yeah i guess we'll see how large the solves end up being if they're all kind of approximately the same size that that might be good enough uh -huh. all right because uh we have uh the stream yeah yeah but yeah um i think that is everything mm -hmm. So exciting. Yeah, I'm excited to see what people come up with for this uh, computation puzzle. Time to do some research. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some fun scheming so far in a notepad. I haven't even shared anything with Panic. I'm hoping to do well. Mm. I have shared with Panic, but uh, I want more reagents. <laughs> You do know that you can take the three stick as many times as you want, right? Yeah, but uh, that's a three stick. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. 
You can also grab that salt as many times as you want, too. I know, easy, but it always stays at one location. And the gold. Don't sleep on the gold. Yeah, easy, that too. <laughs> easy. That's, for, that's for, it's free wanding right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, thanks, everybody, for joining me. Um, thanks, uh, Biggie, Mr. Puzzle, Biston Zorflax, for helping me out on comms. Mm-hmm. Oh, there goes our flag. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> yeah, he's back. And yeah, I'll uh, see everyone Again. two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. See ya. Have a good time oh, yeah. with the yeah. finale. Hi and bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next next stream bye. will be a big finale. Probably a probably be a, a bit of a long stream, but. A big yeah. chunk of to make up for the short stream. This oh well, we're approaching nine o'clock. Well, we're approaching three hours. Yeah, but yeah, I guess there are fewer submitters this week, so took uh, not as long. Plus yeah. the fact that uh, we have a lot of low effort solves as well. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. <laughs>